This is Jason Anderson, Chairman of the Killingly Town Council, and we are calling to order the regular Town Council meeting. We're actually going to start with a public hearing on Item 7A. Uh, this is consideration and action on an ordinance to authorize the purchase of property at 26 Soap Street from United We Stand LLC. Uh, Ms. Gloria, could you just go over this, please? Yes, so the uh, town council um, in over the summer authorized the town to proceed with looking for a, loca an in a location for the administrative offices for our law enforcement. They've outgrown the space that they're here at the town hall. Um, <clears throat> and so we located this property, um, 26 Soap Street. Uh, the authorization under the American Rescue Plan Act funding is was eight hundred thousand. That's what the town council had authorized. Um, the purchase price for this property is four hundred twenty thousand dollars. That was the that's the appraisal price as well. This property would provide uh, space for the administrative offices only. So this um, would be a place similar to how our constabulary functions here in that they um, have their office space here, they can do their reports here and process that information here. Um, but they would not be interacting with the public at this location, nor would we be housing any evidence or that type of stuff. It would also give them adequate space to store um, their equipments and their supplies and needs. Um, <clears throat> and this uh, location, um, would allow the con the program to continue to grow as the community felt the need to do to grow the program um, over the next you know 15 to 20 years as the town determines the next step forwards in um, moving that department into um, or or growing that department further so uh, that's what is before the town at this point so the purchase of a property is required to be um, authorize the town council is required to hold a public hearing and then it would be sent to special town meeting special town meeting is what actually um, is the legislative body that authorizes the transaction thank you um, if you could can you just go a little further as far as um, background of constabulary sure. I do know there was um, a study <coughs> done by the town the original plan was to phase down from the right. four resident state troopers to having our own constables and the original plan was to get up to 10 constables sure um, and a lot of that was based off of cost savings and not being tied to um, whatever the state dictates for right. the cost of troopers yes so um, though that uh, committee and study was performed in um, 2014 through about 2016 was when that study was performed the recommendations came out of that committee and the town at the time was contracting with the state for the resident state trooper program for four resident state troopers um, and that cost was uh, costing the town roughly a million dollars for the four resident state troopers um, the town the after evaluating and that study was performed the recommendation was that the town could convert to a residency trooper constabulary workforce for law enforcement and move it to uh, 10 constables and one residency trooper for effectively the same amount of money you would get essentially two a little more than two res uh, two constables for one every one resident state trooper and so if we look I looked back today at what our budget was in 2016 our budget for law enforcement for law for um, for the four resident state troopers and one part-time admin person was um, just under a million dollars our current this year uh, budget for um, two resident state troopers, eight constables, and an admin person is uh, uh, one point, uh, just under $1.2 million. So um, we've managed, and that's eight years, that's eight years um, in development. So um, the next phase that we would have, you know, if we were to keep with that original thought process of um, going to one resident state trooper and 10 constables the next phase would be to look to sunset one of the resident state troopers and add the remaining two constables to get to 10 constables and 
still remaining with the one resident state trooper that still allows us to utilize all of the state facilities. Um, so overall, given the rate of inflation that we've all incurred um, during this time period, I feel that we've economically stayed very close to what our original, you know, budget was back in, you know, 2016 with a um, million dollars and just um, having really inflationary cost impacts to that budget. The amount in the current year budget for the resident state troopers is $425,000 for perspective. So um, <clears throat> it is a healthy amount still in our budget for the use of resident state troopers. Um, and one of the challenges that the town had faced back in 2012 and 13 was that the state uh, was changing their funding strategies around funding of the resident state trooper program. Um, they previously had funded 25% um, of every resident state trooper assigned to a town, so the towns only had to pay 75% of the cost. They modified that to, um, that where the towns were then paying 85% of the cost, and then they came back and said, well, that the, and then they passed legislation that the state would only provide that 15% funding for the first two, and any above that, the towns had to pay 100% of the cost of the resident state troopers. Um, so we were always kind of caught in that, you know, and it was substantially impactful to the budget. We had some years, and I'm sure um, uh, Ed and Tammy can remember, we had some years in which we had to do some pretty significant transfers to law enforcement because of overages relating to our resident state trooper contract and over time as well as just the base contract. So we did run into those and that was the panel had recommended the movement of the law enforcement division for a number of reasons, not just for the financial equity of it, but also because the um, what they were seeing for uh, uh, crime statistics that they were provided at the time really uh, spoke to needing more boots on the ground specifically to our area to be more impactful and by being able to convert to having 10 constables and one resident state trooper as opposed to just having four resident state troopers, um, you were, we were able to be more impactful. Um, they also wanted to move to more of a community policing model, which means when you're hiring your own law enforcement, um, killingly law enforcement officers have the ability to build um, connections within the community that a state police officer may not have the same ability to do so um, because the state PD moves their people around so frequently um, and we've seen that traditionally with with Troop D there's always a lot of fluidity with positions at Troop D um, and so there's not as much consistency of the same person in the same position for long durations of time um, so it does uh, sometimes challenge that community building opportunity um, within the community so that was the original vision. Um, one of the challenges that we face right now is that the office space that they're located in is here in the town hall. Um, <clears throat> and they've, there's just not enough room. We don't have enough room to house them here at the town hall. Um, and if even moving to just 10 and one right now, we have seven law enforcement officers on. Um, I'm in the process of onboarding our eighth law enforcement officer, so we would be at the eight. Um, law enforcement officer in transitioning even if we were to bring on another two I there's just not enough space here at the town hall so to provide them with a space that they would be able to function out of um, <clears throat> and be able to secure all of their equipment as needed um, is important and that this facility would be able to function for that as the town continued to determine on growth if the town decided to continue to grow that program this facility could manage that and handle that at continued growth um, <clears throat> and you know the town could foreseeably use it for you know the next several decades without any issue the only time the town would really need to move away from that facility is when and if the town decided to move into a municipal police department because that location is too small to build out that type of facility on you would have to move to a, a larger location but that's a future decision um, by the community because we're you know we're not there yet there's a lot of uh, studies and community work that has to happen before those decisions are made thank you very much for that um, so this is a public hearing anyone who would like to speak uh, to this item 
uh, please feel free to come up to the podium and just state your name and address. If I may, Mr. Chairman, there was one public comment submitted by email, um, Lori LeClerc, 81 Thompson Pike in Dayville. Um, she she, uh, her comment um, lists a number of questions that she's looking for um, response to. Um, I can evaluate those questions and provide her response. Um, but um, that was the comment that was submitted via email. That was the only one we received by, by email. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Lydia Rivera Abrams, 45 Mason Hill Road, Dayville. I don't know what it is about this podium. People get nervous <laughs> when they stand up here. I mean, we can talk for hours when we're sitting down there. But when we yeah. come up here, it's another story. Yeah. Um, Ms. Rockwood has outlined a tremendous presentation and great questions um, on her email. I, I wish people at home could have access to it because many of those questions I asked myself as well. I don't want to insult anybody here because I know you all as nice people. A lot of people think the earth will shake if I say that, but I do. Uh, I'm not a spending person. I'm pretty moderate. And I represent not only a community of seniors on a fixed budget, but also 4,000 plus students in the Killingly School District that also require resources and attention. At the annual budget meeting, we're always torn between the school budget and the town budget. The school budget, the school department budget usually takes up anywhere around 80% of the town budget. And that's huge. So we need to streamline it. We need to analyze it. We need to edit it. And we need to approach it with uh, a lot of analysis and common sense. I don't see the same process coming to bear on this particular issue before the town council. I would like to point your attention to the fact that our 23-24 budget will include an addition of over $800,000 for just the teachers' raises alone. The administration, the administrative and Paris, will also take up another couple of hundred thousand. So we are already expecting an increase in that budget. We are requesting, and you have approved, the addition of armed security guards, which without much deliberation was also approved by this town council. And it will cost over 400000 So you keep adding on uh, all these little facilities expenditures that we take out of the non-lapsing account. And we're going to be asking the town to fork out quite a bit of money to sustain the increases that we are providing our staff in the school district so that we don't lose uh, 70 or 80 positions like we did this year because we were at the bottom uh, scale of the pay rate and so that we can keep the maintenance going because I don't know if you've noticed 
uh, when the last presentation of KMS was made, uh, we lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in that uh, plan, which were shaved off by the contractor to make it look like we were on budget. We were on budget because expenditures and things that were on the original plan were shaved off. And so you were presented with a total package, but we suffered the lack of inclusion of all the things that were on the original plan. Now, I asked the contractor at our last meeting, did you suffer any cuts when you cut off our million? No, he said. Of course not. Well, they keep cutting off on what was the expectation of the original plan for KMS. And if you thought that was the end of it on phase one, it will keep happening. We've had a heating problem at, Win at um, Killingly High School uh, for about a month now. Doesn't seem to get corrected. Students at our board meeting say they didn't even know about it. But yet, we have a heating problem. Who is it affecting, and why isn't it fixed? We have an elevator at Westfield uh, Building that we have voted on three times and still not been brought up to par. Oh, the rules have changed. The parts aren't there. You name it. Whatever it is, we're not getting the real story. You are in a position to be the gatekeepers of what the taxpayers have brought to your attention. Now, I, I, again, I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable here, but you were elected as conservatives, and I don't see this town council showing any of that in your decisions. I beg you to please table this for now until you get some facts. As Ms. Rockwood has presented in her email and as it will pertain to the pluses and minuses of other expenditures in our town. Granted, not everyone in our, in our town sends their children to the district schools and we have to up our game on that one. We are the ones who need leadership enough to bring up the achievement and the performance of our students. So it's on us. We may hire the resources, personnel, or other supplies, resources that we need, but it's on us to bring up the leadership that will bring those performance achievement levels up to par. And we hope that more people will trust us with a proper education of their children. But right now, it's difficult to attract a real estate buyer who's thinking already of having to spend on a mortgage and a private school education. So we have to offer the best alternative. And we want to keep the people we've hired. We want to bring fresh wood to our fire. The old wood was wet. We can't build a fire with wet wood. So we're hoping to keep it, and we hope that our town will support us, but it will support us if we analyze what else we're spending on. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Would anyone else like to come up and comment? Please come up to the podium. So I am a student at Killingly High and I want to support her comments with my own. So I have noticed a lot of shortages in teachers recently and the heating problem, yeah, it is a thing. And I feel like it is important for this problem to be solved because even from other students I've heard, they aren't learning as much without their real teachers here. And this could really impact their lives in the future along with their families and whoever else they might live with in the future. Can you provide us with your name and address for the record? 
My name is Andrew Siriyama, and my address is 35A Franklin Street, Danielson. Can you spell your last name, please? S-O-U-R-I-Y-A-M-A-T-H. Any more comment in regards to this item that's open for hearing? Hi, um, I'm another student from Killingly High School. My name is Addison King. I live on 849 Upper Maple Street. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Is this related to item 7 or is this citizen statements and petitions? Right now we are in public hearing. Um, as I stated before she came up, um, that anyone coming up um, make comment to the item that's open for public hearing. Right, it seems like we're not. That's what I. I, I think. Yeah. Uh, we do have the right time. Yep. My bad. We, we do have two times to speak. If you're speaking to um, I the public fine. hearing item, which is um, the purchase of the property for the constabulary, you're more than welcome to speak now. I'm good um, on that Anything one. else, you can come up when we go to public comment period, which is a little bit later. I can wait. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to the item that's open for public hearing right now? Um, Ms. Calorio, I'm, I'm just going to, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, um, I was looking over the comment that was submitted by email, and there's a few things in here I would definitely like to clarify. Um, th there's discussion in here over um, our tax base being able to handle a three million plus increase per annum. I have no recollection of that ever being discussed. Um, we're not even at 1.5 million now. I don't see how Correct. we would end up with a three million per year increase. Um, also, it talked about um, it asked when a, a when was this added to the budget as a line item to purchase the proposed facility? That isn't actually how this procedure goes. Um, Correct. To for the town to purchase a property, it has to come to public hearing, which we're having right now, and then afterwards, it then has to go to a town meeting. Um, so that isn't something that is included in the budget. Correct. Um, and also, uh, question five: um, It asks when, when was the decision to change from a constable with state police oversight? To a municipal department we have not made that decision Correct. the town council has not voted on that Correct. Um, we have had no meetings discussing that um, this project would continue where we are right now with a constabulary with state police oversight correct um, now I do have one one question I don't know if you have these numbers or even rough estimate um, if we were still at four resident state troopers um, with the decrease in the amount that the state is covering um, and the additional cost per year that the state is charging us, where would we be approximately right now? Um, to be honest, I don't have that number. Okay. And, I, and I don't want to, you know, falsely give you an, a number. So I would have to, you know, develop that number and give it to you. I did not go back and recreate okay. what that would look like. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but given that four right now is four hundred and twenty-five thousand, um, that two is four hundred twenty-five. Two, yeah, two is four hundred twenty-five thousand. Another two would be another four hundred twenty-five thousand. Plus, we would have to add in the quarterly overtime because right now all of our law enforcement officers do the overtime, which is yep. a substantial reduction from what we would be paying the state PD mm -hmm. in overtime costs, and that. You know, I know in prior years that was averaging close to um, when we had four resident state troopers way back when we were averaging um, anywhere between one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand um, dollars so that would be probably substantially more um, so we would got very rough guesstimate I would I would expect that if I did the calculation I would be landing right, right around um, 1.3 1.5 for four resident state troopers but again I'd have to go back through and redig yeah. through those numbers I haven't I haven't done that exercise mm -hmm. but that's just kind of walking through. Yeah what I know um, how it looked like in the past um, uh, no, so the two we have now the state is we're paying 85 percent yes we're paying 85 percent uh, for the two that we have um, and then um, the amount that we're 
um, uh, we still do have some overtime that we pay uh, Troop D that we that we pay for uh, state coverage as well for when um, our officers can't cover that overtime piece um, uh, largely events um, but most of the time our crew tries to handle all of the events so that way we're not calling in state PD for that so we do have some uh, minor components for overtime with that but it's relatively small in comparison Mary, is there any upcoming legislation in the next session where they could potentially decrease, I mean, increase our cost and decrease theirs again? Yeah, so there's always contemplation within the legislation of moving that to 100% paid by the, by the communities. It's a big pushback, especially by the small municipalities, by, by small municipalities on that. Um, I know that, um, so I'm a member of COST, which is um, Council of Small Towns for Connecticut. Um, and that is always a topic of conversation that comes up in those meetings as we prep for legislative cycles. Uh, typically, almost every legislative cycle, the topic comes up. Whether it makes it out of committee or not is a different story, and sometimes it has more uh, legs than other years in which coming out of committee. This year, I don't know that there's going to be a huge amount of pressure to change that legislatively, but it is something that, you know, it's always on the radar and that um, it typically gets brought up every legislative cycle. Because it does provide a cost savings to the state exactly. when they're trying to balance the budget. And it puts it on us. In response to number seven, um, I still, like I said before, um, I believe that the people do not have enough information to, to really make a decision. I think we should have had an estimate where we have remodel costs that are laid out for the taxpayers to see what we're going to lose in the tax base loss for the property, added utility costs, security monitor, long-term goal. What are we going to do with the building when we're, when we're at that full capacity mm -hmm. and we don't need that building anymore? So what, are we, what is our plan to do with that? What is our mm -hmm. time frame we're going to do? What are we going to do with that? Um, I think that the taxpayers need to know this information. They can't mm -hmm. just give them a little bit of information and make a million-dollar decision with that. <coughs> And, and I respect that um, and understand that. And I, and I would say that the town hasn't made all of those decisions on what the costs of a new facility would be because we haven't done that feasibility study. We haven't done that level of analysis to determine what location. Building. For this building, this building we should have an estimate what it's going to cost us. We have that. Did well, the de did, did the taxpayers know that? I mean, that's, that's, that's been listed? that's been listed. That's been on the website, and that's the, we have and it's been public information, and it was an put with how much it's going to cost. Yep. What the tax loss we're going to have, all the all the utility costs that it's going to cost us, the tax the taxes we're going to lose. So the uh, probably I don't th I think the only thing I didn't include on that information specifically was the re was the reduction in the grand list. Um, and what that implication is. I think that's the only information that I didn't have on there, but we have an estimated in here for what the uh, utility costs, the ongoing annual costs are gonna be for the facility, um, as well as, uh, and the, as, well as um, <clears throat> the anticipated cost for renovation. So we're expecting that all in that this, um, this move, this purchase, and renovation is going to come in less than six hundred and thirty thousand. So the purchase is four hundred and twenty. The remaining balance is what we've allocated for what has to be done for renovation. I've outlined what those renovations are. There's restroom renovations that need to take place. We have to do hardening of the exterior of the main office administrative building, which is, you know, we have to bulletproof glass, things like that. That has to harden the exterior. Um, and we have to do um, the fiber network connection to the to the facility in order for them to be um, connected to the CEN network, which is the same fiber network that the town is on. But we've asked, we've given the estimate of what that cost is. Um, as far as what do we do with the facility once we're done, that's part of the community's decision. Mm -hmm later down the road as you determine what you want to do in moving to another either building another facility or where this department goes in the future um, my goal in bringing a property to the council for consideration is i was looking for a property that this uh in 
keeping in line with the council's communicated goals in their last two goal setting sessions, which was to continue to support and grow the constabulary program. I wanted to locate a space that they could continue to grow in and be in for at least the next decade or two as the community determines what is the next step. I understand that with every community, a decision around building a facility, especially like a police station, which is going to be a significant investment, um, it takes time to develop that that answer. What does it look like? Where does it get located? What is the investment? And when is the community ready to do that? That all takes time and to identify a space that this program can function out of effectively for the duration I think was important and not, and not being wasteful of the taxpayer's invest, original investment into the property. And that's why the property is before you because it, it will meet those needs of that department as the community and the council des decides how it wants to invest in and grow that department so over you time. you anticipate this property being in use with the constabulary for the next 10 to 20 years? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, one thing I will speak to that coming from the town of Montville um, who is basically very similar to our department where their uh, constabulary underneath the state police. Um, that facility, that, that department grew, it, it was I think roughly 30 years before they hit 26 officers, 28 officers, somewhere in that area. And I believe a little longer than that before they even moved to a public safety building, they were in the old toll booth on Route 2A. Um, and they operated out of that for a very long period of time. They had, um, the top of my head I believe they were up around to the 26 officers operating out of a building that is roughly the same size as this one um, so so I really believe this facility would give us the room to grow um, and and if that's the direction the town wants us to go um, anything as far as going to a municipal police force would always come before the council it would come before the public um, they'd be able to absolutely weigh in on it um, and uh, as far as the cost of this I know we have looked at other f other facilities this is by far the cheapest of the ones we looked at um, due to um, some of the facilities we looked at one of them we wouldn't even have owned we would have been renting and dumping this kind of money into a building we don't even own which uh, exactly that is something that I couldn't get behind um, whereas we're not dumping anywhere near the amount of money into this building and we own the building um, we did look at another facility, actually, actually another one other facility that would have been a rental that we would have dumped uh, more than yeah more than so eight hundred thousand into yeah. the renovation. I mean, so I mean it was, um, and one of the other advantages to this too is being able to tie into the town's communication network. Correct. Um, because our fiber runs right up that road. Um, right. So I mean it, there's. Being Everything. that close to critical infrastructure is important for the law enforcement division. Yeah. Sorry. No, no problem. Um, I just I just think that we we have facilities here already in place. And we're we're acting on this when we already have enough room. It's only gonna be well, administrative. <laughs> to to that I will say, um, town staff, they have already converted closets to yeah, office space. Yeah. So not necessarily the constabulary, but other places in this town building, we've outgrown this building. Um, so whether we're moving the constabulary to another location or we're moving another department to another location, which the logistics of that, it's easier to move the constabulary to another location than let's say we took the tax assessor's office and moved it somewhere else or um, <coughs> the building department and moved them somewhere else. They need to be it's a lot easier for them to operate here than if we move them remote instead of just moving the constables and, um, and if I may um, it they don't have enough space here um, where they're <laughs> currently located um, as we you know I'm getting ready to onboard the eighth person we don't have enough space in that in that office configuration for the eighth person the other challenge that we run into is as they are here and they're on duty they're um, vehicles are in the parking lot and running largely most of the time in the visitor parking space which means it's pushing all of the individuals that are utilizing our town hall um, for you know going to the town clerk's office or going they're pushing pushing into the regular 
parking lot as well um, and we're running into parking challenges as well because people are not able to find appropriate parking um, right within the close proximity so uh, they also have a challenge with being able to um, you know um, house and secure um, house and I don't want to say secure but house all of the necessary equipment um, we have to you know we have to maintain them in alternate locations which is not ideal um, so by being able to bring this division into its own property that can be fully secured um, and as the town you know if, if we're getting ready to onboard our eight then we're already outgrown this space if we're our first initial threshold goal was to get to 10 that means adding two more to a space that doesn't have enough space um, this property would allow for that continued growth and then if the town considers moving forward with that and adding more you then have capacity to do so if we wait until there's at, at this point we don't have enough space but at some point you become dysfunctional because of lack of space um, I don't want to see the department get to a point of dysfunction simply because we have not f made forethought and that's where the opportunity of the funding with the American Rescue Plan Act as opposed to using mill rate property taxes to pay for the acquisition we're utilizing the American Rescue Plan Act funding that the town received to make the one-time investment and that's why it was brought forward and supported but um, I understand you know those concerns well other thing I'd like to say too is when you're trying to recruit officers um, if you have a very small area that they're operating out of um, you might not get the, the upper quality you might get someone who's willing to okay well I'm, I'm not gonna really spend a lot of time there I'm just gonna I'm just looking for a job whereas um, the the someone who's more desirable may not choose to come to a place where oh, we're all sharing a 150 square foot area during the day um, I know it's like exaggeration of the size of the room they're in now but um, mm -hmm. I know it's not much bigger than that um, uh, so I mean I, I see a lot of pluses to moving there and I do understand that um, yes it, it, it this is it's proposed of using the American Rescue Plan Act money the COVID money as a lot of people call it um, that has been passed down from the federal government to the state government and to us um, and I do understand yes it's grant money it, and ultimately as Mr. White has stated many times it's all taxpayer money um, but that's money that's been given to the town to spend if we don't spend it we have to turn it back in and then at that point I believe we're doing an injustice to our citizens and taxpayers because all of us have paid into the pool of money that that ARPA money came out of and if we're just giving it back that means all the taxpayers in town have paid into a pool of money and we decided not to use the allocated amount out of that pool of money that we were allowed to spend so you oh. mis you're misconstruing what I'm thinking because so we're, we're, we're purchasing this building along with the building there's going to be added costs right there's going to be added costs at some point the ARPA funds are going to run out and obviously there's a million other things we could be using it for this I, I do like the idea but you know my issue with the real estate economy right now and the commercial economy that is taking a dive the interest rates going to go up another half a percent I just think it's a I, I don't agree with the deal that's all I think we need the space I agree with the space but at some point in time twofold we're going to be adding costs to the town for one thing and like I said the opera funds are going to run out we're not going to have that anymore so we're going to have a lot of open-ended open-ended uh, programs here that aren't going to be funded at some point in time that's all thank you Mr. Grandowski um, my issue is um, we're doing a massive renovation on the Westfield Avenue building. I mean, we've got temporary classrooms of the KMS people going in there. So, I mean, this is not, this doesn't have to be done overnight. But when that group leaves, that's a significant square footage footprint. 
Why can't we use that? Um, the other issue, we go out there on Soap Street, there is zero interaction of, the, of our citizens with the police. There will be absolutely zero. There's probably going to be a gate in the front where you can't talk to anybody. At least when you're in the town hall you have here, you have half a chance of grabbing a constable. Now, if you try to call in, you get Troop D, that's a joke. I, I don't care. You can say you want to talk to a constable. I've had a number of people the, the last year or so talk about it. And they were so rude over there. They didn't want, they said they don't want to have their name said or anything else. But I'm hearing this through the grapevine, and that sucks. We, we need to have interaction with our constabulary. If the system is still going to go as it is, I, I'm, I will be a fan of not having as many because if, if they're supposed to be community policing, but it's whatever policy that Troop D has, we want to say community policing, unless Mary has somebody already identified, um, they send them where they want, where their interest best lies. And from what I've seen on a number of occasions, our constables are a replacement for the state police where state police should be out there. They should be bringing a state policeman from another entity to come and cover the issue, and our constable should be in town. So I think a, a building, my thought, Westfield Avenue, I mean, we're renovating it anyway. You could be, be do some creative uh, work over there. Um, and then because we have people in the building, there will be an interactive effort with our constables. Um. I, I, that's as far as that, because we're constabulary underneath the state police, any dispatching has to go through the state police barracks. Um, it isn't like someone right now can come up to a constable in a town hall and say, oh, I got this issue, can you come with me? They, it, that isn't the way the constabulary works. Um, it has to be dispatched through, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it has to be dispatched through the state police barracks. Um, one thing, and as far as having that building there, um, and you're, you're not, you stating that there won't be any interaction. Um, Montville, it was the same way. The only interaction you got was when they had the uh, Montville police, the constabulary was in the old toll building before they moved to the public safety building. There, there was no interaction there. Um, everything was done through the state police barracks which there was even more difficult because Troop E in Montville is on 395 so you've got to get on the highway and pull off the highway into the barracks at least here they're on Westcott Road they're a little bit more accessible than a state police barracks that's on the highway but my, my point is um, having a constabulary it isn't the same as having a municipal police force a municipal police force we would have way more control over as far as where they go as far as what they do but being a constabulary underneath the state resident state uh, the state police program there are certain things we don't have control over um, the only way to change that would be if we go to a municipal police force and at that point the 800,000 you might as well throw that out the window we're looking at probably to between a building and the police force you're probably looking 15 16 million dollars for a police station where you can have your lockup, um, you can have your evidence holding, um, you can have your impound yard. So all that right now is done at the state police barracks, whereas the only way we gain more control is go with the municipal police force. And the cost of that, and, and Ms. Clory, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I mean, if you have anything to add to that, I. So I'm, I just actually spoke with one of uh, my counterparts uh, towards the middle of the state. They were opening bids for a 20,000 square foot police station. Uh, build new is what they were uh, opening bids for. Their budget was uh, $16.8 million, and they were positive that the bids were going to come in higher than that, and they were going to have to scale and make concessions. In And that's a month ago. So um, again, that is when the community is ready to determine what that investment is and what that looks like. I don't know what their specs were. I don't know what they were, you know, deeming for that. So that would have to be, you know, when that time comes for this community to determine if that's 
if that's the avenue and direction that the community decides to take um, this location the soap street location is very centrally located so it's very easy for them to access all the areas of town they there there are certain areas of town that they get a lot of high call volume from um, this would they would be in close close proximity for a lot of those high volume areas but they they are right adjacent to main route access to access really all of the areas of Killingly so that was a primary focus was finding a central location so that way they would be able to be when they're dispatched they have a, a if they're physically at that location they have a short response time in order to be able to get to any of our points within town um, you know um, I am working with um, we I have a uh, Buddy Conroy is our public safety administrator that's over that's assisting and it oversees that division at this point in time and he and I are working on how do we do different community outreaches that gives the town the, the our law enforcement and that division more direct access in um, conversational aspects with the community um, as opposed to somebody just showing up in a driveway somewhere to say hey I have an issue right but have them be able to have some more purposeful um, in interaction I know our officers um, really do their best to attend be at every event that we have to be able to interact with the community and also have participated in a number of food drives toy drives things like that within our community so that way they can have that direct community interaction and have that conversation and avail themselves many of them that had ha that have had um, that residents that have had um, uh, ongoing concerns or complaints um, they have um, work directly with that with that resident on an ongoing basis so that way they maintain continuity along um, some of those issues in being able to um, get to resolution on some of those so I think that our our staff really works hard to build those bridges on a community relations point and I think going forward that you know we can help to continue to build those bridges as you know as we're developing this program it's finding the space in order for them to be able to um, function adequately and properly um, to be able to have enough space to add um, uh, officers as we as we uh, grow the program and it also shows that the community is committed to the program you know um, the when we're trying to attract um, officers coming in they want to know that the community is really committed to keeping and maintaining the constabulary program and having a location that they can function out of and work out of is is a commitment as well um, <clears throat> so um, those are all um, components but um, I you know uh, the Westfield Avenue you brought up about utilizing Westfield Avenue and you know um, I think we all want to use Westfield Avenue for everything um, I've spent many many hours as well as school staff and community center staff and everybody that's currently utilizing Westfield Avenue in how it can be utilized um, I can affirmatively say to you every square inch of that building is fully utilized and then some um, there's not space to put the constabulary um, division at Westfield Avenue and still house central office the community center and East Con there's just there's not space in that building to also add the constabulary there's not enough room in the building um, that also houses the community store it also houses the dry storage for um, the community kitchens food ba uh, food bank and it also houses the wrestling program right there's a lot of functions that are happening and a lot of space already dedicated with all of that space is fully dedicated within that building there's just not room to add this program into there I'm all for using and maximizing space um, and not taking on additional space if we don't need it if there was a way to put it in there I, there's just there's not enough square footage to get it in there with all the programs and all the functionality that's happening in there and moving the community center in there there's not enough space 
Well, I guess my, my biggest point is from the conversations that I've had with a few people that if we are growing the constabulary, and I'm, I'm glad you made the comment, we have to go through Troop D, there's no interaction. People want interaction. That's huge. They're not getting interaction, and they come out during budget time, they may cut the budget. That's what I, but trouble is they will not go there. They're afraid to go to that podium and offer their views. And I, no matter what I say, I'm trying to, you know, you've got to come forward and, and, and that's the alternative. And they feel that they're being left out of the cold. The whole thing, when this was proposed a long time ago, this was supposed to be a community policing effort. And it falls so short of that because it's, we're an extension of the state police. The way, the way things are handled, you know, we're going on uh, um, uh, mutual aid to Brooklyn. I don't know how often are we going out there and whatnot. Wait a minute. Mutual aid is a two-way street. Okay? If they don't have a constabulary to send somebody back here and we need it, I, I got that from, so I had quite a discussion with somebody yesterday. And it's like, okay, what are you doing? So it, it's kind of like, at least in the town hall, they felt... Yeah, we can run into them once in a while, we have half a chance. It's not that we can go in and say, well, I have this issue, I need it done right now. But you can kind of have a general conversation. They're sort of in their office, but if you can catch them in the hallway, like Mary was saying about the food drives, they were at, I saw them at, oh, at Target the other day. Yeah, that's one thing, but you have a better chance when, when you're here, happenstance to get them. So, that's why I'm looking at a re remote, separate facility. I'm having a hard time. Um, they're not here at the town hall very often. They, they might stop in to do a little bit of paperwork, but Mary's got some numbers over the last couple of years of the number of calls that our constables have made. I, I sat on the, that commission that, that pushed forward this constabulary, and the numbers back then were uh, you know a couple hundred calls a month that's all our resident troopers were making and now we're we're, we're closing in on probably almost a thousand calls just killingly uh, so uh, killingly uh, on a quarterly basis killingly alone has um, just about uh, 2,000 calls on a quarterly basis and about half of those are managed by our constables the other half is managed essentially by our by Troop D, um, and that continues to morph and, and change as we continue to um, bring on board. So that's that's roughly so. Uh, one of the numbers that I got, uh, one of our law enforcement officers provided me a number from January 1st of 2020 to December to now current 2022, December 2022 total calls for service that our const constables, just our constables did for ser calls for service, 7,868. It's just our guys in the two years. That's what they've done for calls to service. I can, I can add to that. I've, I've had an issue when I've gone to Troop D and never, I've got to be honest, I've never had an issue with the, always like that. No, I, I'm just I'm just throwing up my interaction. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's that's all I can I so I don't I, need them. I don't have it. I've not had an in. I, I wish that if I was involved, then I can say from my experience. So I right. can't. So I can only go what when someone grabs me. And then of course they grab me at the wrong time, and my wife is where were you for so long? I'm right. say, I'll, whatever it is, it is. So that, I, I got to bring that forward at in in this discussion. That that's where I'm coming from. That, that, and that's their perception. Um, I do want to respond to one other thing Mr. Whitehead said. You had asked about um, the amount of uh, tax revenue loss there would be by the purchase of this property. As Ms. Colorio didn't have those numbers prepared, those numbers are available to anyone on the town's website. It you is. can find out what the taxes are on any parcel of land anywhere in town. Correct. Um, so it isn't like that's a number we've been hiding. Right. Um, it, it's out there. It is available. Yeah, I didn't separately put it into the information. If we, if we go out to the public, the public is, we should give them everything. It's more transparent to give them everything. Give them 
what we tend to spend, what it's going to cost them, mm -hmm. so they can make a, 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 an educated decision on what what's really happening and what we want to do. What's the long term goal? What are we going to do with the building? Otherwise, you wouldn't have had all these questions. You wouldn't have had and and I would say blow up if you would have had all this all this okay. information. Mr. Wood. Um, I know. We have. I'm watching. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can be quick. <laughs> um, I, I think, honestly, the, uh, the the biggest concerns, obviously, it, it sounds like to me from what I heard on my way in there, because I was also answer, we were talking about police, and I was answering a 911 call as a EMT. So uh, hence why I was late. But uh, so some of the biggest concerns I'm understanding more of is uh, not so much the use the use of ARPA funds to help with this it's the what is the long-term solution in the end like we are going to eventually this does affect the taxpayer um, I know that uh, I did catch Ms. Rivera Abrams comments and I appreciate them because she's always been great with us and I've, I've always enjoyed talking with her um, you know we one thing I will say that uh, we are conservatives but that doesn't mean we never spend money uh, but we do try to keep a good um, hands on our purse, if you will, because it is the people's money, as Mr. Whitehead is always very good about uh, reminding us. Um, I, I just am uh, remiss, though, about the few years back when we had both the KMS project and the um, Westfield Ave project, and we turned, turned those down. Uh, we turned one of them down. Westfield. It was Westfield. My memory's great. It's just short. Um, so we turned that down, and here we are only a few years later, and this costs went up significantly so if the town continues to move forward with the constabulary eventually to a, a true municipal police force my biggest concern is that we're going to in a few years another year or so look at another building and now it's going to be exponentially higher or lower uh, it, we could be lucky and be lower but unfortunately right now the way the market's trending it looks like nothing's going to be that great of a deal and if we build something it's going to be ex extremely expensive um, so, you know, I, I, I think that the role of government is not to rush things by any means. We are supposed to debate. This is, this is great, people asking questions. We're supposed to debate. We're supposed to um, really hash it out so that way there we can come to the public and say, hey, we, we really hit every angle uh, at this. Um, and that's why I personally wouldn't be opposed to um, tabling this for another month personally, but that's just me. Um, but to uh, one comment that you did make, Mr. Grandelsky, um, and I, I don't think you made it out of uh, anger or anything like that. I just think it was more out of uh, not understanding the system. I, I agree with you. Mutual aid means that you know, there's a mutual understanding. But in the towns of Hampton and Eastford, they don't have an ambulance. So if mo the ambulance service I work for in the town of Brooklyn, if we go mutual aid to Hampton, they don't reciprocate that. Um, they use utilize KB ambulance. Um, and so from time to time our state police will have to be used as mutual aid but those are large-scale incidents those are not small um, small things that the state police themselves can handle but unfortunately we also are living in a time where if I were to be frank with you we don't have enough firefighters we don't have enough police officers and we don't have enough EMTs and paramedics so it's really hard and I'm looking at the time too so I'll finish <laughs> thank you our special town meeting is scheduled for 8 p.m. And the council needs to take action on item 7A to send it to special town meeting. So we will have to, oh, I will entertain a motion to move item 7A ahead of item two. So moved. Second. Discussion. We we are making a motion to move item seven A up to right now before we go into the town council meeting, um, so that way we can move it to special town meeting and open the special town meeting. I didn't get to ask my questions. So I agree with Ray about tabling it. Is that a new motion or do we just, I vote no on this motion? 
So mm -hmm. this would be just to move the item for the town council to then make a motion and then have discussion where you could potentially ask your questions and then the council would make a determination as to whether or not you send this item to town meeting tonight, special town meeting tonight, or take another alternative action. So in this time, I can ask my questions. After you get to the yeah, actual. Once we get to move, well, first we're trying to move this item up now to where we can discuss it. Yeah, we have to have a vote yeah. to move it up. To move it up because we're so changing. I think we got we got we're under a time frame yeah. that we're, we got to move. We're changing the order of the agenda. Agenda is all this motion is. Right. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we had a motion was made by Mr. Grandelsky, seconded by Mr. Wood, yep. to uh, move item seven A up to after item one uh, before item two. Any discussion regarding that? Seeing none, all's in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. At this time, we'll move on to item 7A, which is consideration and action on the ordinance to authorize the purchase of property at 26 Soap Street from United We Stand LLC. Um, right now, uh, I will entertain a motion to move this item to special town meeting i'll make that motion i'll second motion has been made by mr Cattula, seconded by ms george um discussion this is where we can discuss further this is where we were trying to get to with all of this um ms murphy i believe you had i i had a couple questions um so on number four uh, when it said we didn't do a line item, we did vote you know, on the budget to designate $800,000 or so of our, okay, explain that to me then. What did we do? So we actually, oh. Oh, so, so the regular operating budget, this, the, the ARPA funds were not part of the regular operating budget. Okay. So that was not voted by within the budget because that was not part of the operating budget. The American Rescue Plan Act funding was separate action taken by the town council um, because it, by the um, by requirements of the American Rescue Plan Act funding it cannot be it could not supplant a budget so it could but not we be took a vote on it you did the okay, town council voted on it vote I think what this uh, this yeah. public comment was was yeah. that it wasn't within the operating budget of the town which is voted on by referendum in May I think that's the reference okay. there so uh, my question <laughs> is when Lydia gets up and talks about the school budget, mm -hmm. that's totally separate from our ARPA funds. Correct. Um, is would we ever take ARPA funds and go here? We're making up money for the school, or is that totally separate? So the ARP funds do not allow you to supplant the budget. In other words, you cannot use it okay. to so use it into it your budget. So. Of, uh, the ARP funds have to be... Uh, so we're not in competition with this purchase, with the school system, really. Correct. So yeah. the, uh, but the ongoing, so you would have ongoing maintenance, which we did put in there that we're estimating the ongoing cost to maintain the facility for utilities is going to be between ten and $20,000 overall. So that okay. would be an, a, a regular operating budget expense so that is going to go into the operating budget okay. in, the, in, in the future. And that was one of my next questions. So uh, operating budget, 10 to 20,000 plus lost revenue, and that's about it, right? Correct. Okay. And then uh, just real quick, Mary, so I could give to the town if anybody asks me, I, the numbers went by really quickly. We've got two offices we want. 10 offices or we have so eight? we ha we currently have budgeted eight constables okay and so we have two resident state troopers so we have that's so how many law enforcement that we have the goal the original goal that was set back in 2016 was 10 constables with one resident state trooper okay that part I got so right now I just want to do the numbers in case someone sure. come and ask me mm -hmm. two eight and one admin 1.5 million no, no, we are at one one point. We're just under one point two million. One point two million for all of that. Correct. Now a number flew by four hundred and fifty thousand for each state or for both states. So that's for two resident state troopers. Okay. Okay. And that's eighty five percent. Okay. Just so and I that's know. That's eighty five percent. In case correct. anybody were to ask me. Correct. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Um. Okay, Miss George. 
One thing I wanted to say when you were talking about the ARPA money, the Board of Ed also got their own ARPA funds. That, well, that's what I wanted to million. clarify. Yeah. So, yeah, there's they no competition there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> well, another point about the operating cost for the building, it has to be offset by what it costs for the utilities and, and the use of the town building. Sure. And so mm. it will change some of our utility costs here because. Um, this building will then essentially be closed on the weekends which right now mm -hmm. it's not so we do have to do additional heating and cooling in this building over the weekends because we do have law enforcement in the building um, they don't have weekends off and they don't have holidays off um, and so uh, this this building will be able to go back to more standard hour of operation Monday through Friday which will reduce some of the costs here um, well, while I don't expect it to be a one-for-one one offset, but there will be some uh, ease up of utility cost here. Um, one thing I wanted to, to touch on as well is the ASOs that the Board of Ed has um, added, basically the, the armed security officers, the five of them, um, that were approved by the Board of Ed. Um, the Town Council also approved to have those come up, basically, uh, have those come on as um, members of the police force uh, basically under the umbrella of the police force um, so that's even more staff that's five more people that we're trying to bring in um, to, to squeeze into I mean granted the majority of the time they're gonna be at the school systems but I'm sure there's gonna be some points where they're gonna need to be in here as well Sure, we'll have so additional training that they're going to have to do. So training activities will have to take place likely in the administrative offices, but also there's going to be uh, additional equipment that we're going to need to be housing and storing for um, the for that division. Um, I consider that a, a separate division because they are not sworn officers. That'll be a separate division, but that will need to have its own managed supply of um, equipment um, that we don't there's just there's not room here we can't necessarily house that equipment in a school facility so I know you gave us a cost of renovating the third floor and I know it was astronomical I think the last time we looked at that so I think I've looked at numbers on that that go all the way back to the 80s just so you know and back in the 80s it was really cheap um, <laughs> it was it was like under a hundred thousand dollars I think the last time we looked at it it was probably hovering close to like two or three million dollars it was pretty substantial in renovating the third and fourth floors largely the biggest ex uh, one of the bigger expenses to that component is the elevator cost we have to fully replace the elevator and we have to extend the elevator shaft up to the third and fourth floor um, on that and also creating a secondary egress um, there's no secondary egress from the third or fourth floor so we'd have to create either an external staircase to come down from to somewhere off the building or extend one of the uh, staircases up an additional level which is uh, costly the other uh, bigger portions of that expense in the last study that they evaluated was um, the weight bearing capacity of the floors um, in once you get furniture and files and all of that up onto those floors what's the weight capacity of those floors at that point in time so um, the number is substantial and that was one that it just continues to grow um, one thing that I didn't bring up um, during previous meetings when we discussed this was um, I want to see a call box uh, a way for yes. um, the public being that people are going to know that this is where the police are they're going to see police cars in the parking lot I want them to be able to walk up and grab a phone yes um, and whether they're talking to someone in that building or talking to someone at Troop D I want them to be able to access people there whereas with them being here in a town hall if it's after hours they can't get in they can't talk to somebody correct they could see the police cars in a parking lot stop walk up to the building in an emergency and there's nobody here and there's no way for them to talk to anybody in the building then they have to go to troop D um, at least this way it gives them if they see the vehicles there okay there's police there there's a phone they can actually get to somebody um, and, and that was something that I had brought up initially and Ms. Calorio did say that that is going to be incorporated in yeah this. we have that incorporated in the renovation cost
any more discussion? So we had a motion and a second to move this to town meeting. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. That was Mr. Grandelski and Mr. Whitehead. Abstentions? Motion carries. At this time, we will open the special town meeting on item 7A. It is currently 8 11 p.m. Town of Killingly, special town meeting, December 13, 2022. A special town meeting of the, of the electors and citizens qualified to vote in the town meeting of the town of Killingly, Connecticut shall be held pursuant to section 1008 of the Killingly Town Charter to be held in the town meeting room of the Killingly Town Hall, 172 Main Street, Killingly, Connecticut, on December 13, 2022, at 8 p.m. for the following purpose. Ordinance to authorize the purchase of property at 26 Soap Street from United We Stand, LLC. Be it ordained by the town council of the town of Killingly that the town manager is hereby authorized to sign and execute a warranty deed purchase and sale agreement and such other documents as be, as may be needed with United We Stand LLC of Danielson, Connecticut to purchase real estate located at 26 Soap Street, Killingly, Connecticut in the amount of 420000 Killingly Town Council, Jason Anderson, Chairman, dated Killingly, Connecticut, the 22nd day of November, 2022. And I'd like to open nominations for a moderator of this special town meeting. I'll nominate Chairman Anderson for a moderator. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. second. Are there any more nominations? Or Ray. Ray I think Ray, Ray was first. Kevin. Are there any more nominations? I move nominations be closed. I'll sure. second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? And I'd like to vote on Jason Anderson as moderator of a special town meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I'd like to turn it over to Jason Anderson. Thank you. So at this time, this is the um, special town meeting in which um, we, will, we are open for comment and also we will be ending with a vote on the expenditure for this facility as was uh, just brought up. So anyone who would like to speak you would, I think you would be looking for a motion to begin okay, discussion. Motion. So All a motion, right. a second, and then look to begin discussion. All right. I will entertain a motion to uh, discuss this item. So moved. I'll second it. A uh, motion has been made by Mr. Wood, seconded by Ms. Wakefield. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, so during a town meeting, this is open to not just the council, it's open to everyone that is sitting here. Um, so any... So I think, yeah, I think you misunderstood me. You did a motion to, um, to start discussing the item. You needed, in order to discuss the item, you need a motion to approve the item, a motion and a second, and then the group collectively discusses, and then you come to an outcome for um, this, vote. This and then you come to a vote. This is my first time in four years. I know, I know. That's I why. That's why I backed up. <laughs> it's okay. That's why I backed up. We, we I was like, wait a minute. You guys voted, and I don't think you property. you weren't voting on what you thought you were. So, the motion you would be looking for a motion to approve the ordinance as presented, and then you would look for a second, and then the town meeting would discuss it right. before you call a vote. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Um, so I, I will entertain a motion to approve the ordinance. Oh. I'll second, second it. Motion has been made by Ms. Wakefield, seconded by Mr. Katula. Um, all those in favor are no. Nope. 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 Now, now your discussion. Now, okay. Now, now discuss, discuss it as okay. the town meeting. Let's discuss right. it now. This is this is the first <laughs> property purchase. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time. And, and we didn't even do any when I was vice chair. So, so that was Tammy and Ray? Kevin. Kevin. Tammy and Kevin. Okay, so at this time we're open for discussion. Um, anyone that would like to speak further to this, um, feel free. 
uh, come up to the podium or any council members that want to speak it, it's it, at this point basically an open forum for discussion for this item and it is uh, those that are eligible to vote in the town of Killingly so it yep. is registered voters and registered those voters or those property. on a on the grand list with property valued at a thousand dollars or more that is who el who is eligible to vote at uh, okay. the town at this town meeting okay. now as far as speaking at the town meeting does those anybody can speak apply? it's just okay. no anybody can speak it's just for okay. voting yep. purposes that's okay. who's eligible to vote okay. so for the discussion anyone can come up and speak to this You can, oh, you can speak, speak right from the. You can, you can speak, speak right from, from there. there. So you can speak yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. have to get up to the podium. <laughs> it's easier here. I just want to say I thought this part was happening another day. That's why I was so insistent oh. on asking my questions. Oh. No problem. Any further discussion? Oh. Yep. Please come forward. I'm sorry. No need to apologize. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Schatz. Just a couple of more questions or issues to bring up. Lydia Rivera Abrams, 45 Mason Hill Road, David. Just three things. First of all, I've heard it uh, stated a couple of times that the discussion about expanding from the constable or the constabulary to a full police department has not been had. Correct. We have not had that discussion. Correct. That discussion was had a couple of years ago, four years ago. Uh, I remember uh, one of the uh, members of the town council at that time made sure that at that time the vote was the constabulary, not the full-blown police department. Mm -hmm. So that discussion has not been had. Mm -hmm. That vote has not been had. We are, in, uh, you are voting to expand a program that the town still has not approved, and you haven't either. So we're, I think we're putting the cart before the ox, if I'm not mistaken. Second point, saying that the purchase of the building is 400 and 420,000 420, is not really accurate because when you add the renovations it is over 1 million no that's incorrect okay so the purchase of the property is four hundred twenty thousand dollars we anticipate that there's going to be uh, about um, less than $150,000 worth of renovation. So after renovation and the purchase of the property, we're expecting to have only have expended um, under $630,000 in total for this property. And the that's the investment. And the operations, the maintenance. So the operations, we're, ante we're anticipating that to be between ten dollars and $20,000 on an annual basis. Okay. Thank you. Which will be in the operating budget. Thank you. Uh, the calls that you stated, the numbers, was that I believe you said over two years it was 7,000? For the time span of two years, it was um, over 7,800 calls. Quarterly? Um, on a qu recently, on a quarterly basis, Killingly has been having calls of roughly um, 2,000, I want to say 2,500. I'd have to go back and look at the numbers. Divided. Uh, I have the. Unrealistically <laughs> divided by four, it brings it down. What do you mean unrealistically divided? Well, by four? because you never know. One month it could be 300, the other. Oh, okay. So if you, it, mathematically, I know if you do. divide it by four, four in a, uh, in a quarter, there's three months. A quarter is three months. A quarter is three months. Thank you. So you do the math, because uh, it's not my strong suit. But, um, and the last point is, you may want to ask Mr. Rio. Mr. Steve Rio very, very, very adamantly told me publicly t over two or three times that Westfield could not, under any circumstances, 
be used as a swing space for KMS. It was impossible. And I kept saying, don't put Westfield Ave on the, uh, don't take it off the table. And he would say, it's off the table, can't do it. Folks, you can do it. You can use Westfield and you don't have to buy another building or pay whatever it requires to bring it into the specs. So again, please table this because just saying that it's on a website doesn't mean that residents are informed. You are assuming that everyone has a PC. Do not make that mistake. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Gloria, one thing I want to bring up. Um, you had spoke to, as far as the ASOs, the equipment not being able to be stored at a school. Mm -hmm. The fact that EastCon is in that building, doesn't that prohibit us from storing that equipment at Westfield? Um, I would or have would to. would that be? I would have to go through what the implications would potentially be, but there would likely be some concerns around that. Okay. Yes, because okay. it's currently being utilized for school uh, space. Yeah. Um, and so there, I'm sure that we would have um, challenge. I don't know that it would be a definitive no, but I will say, um, and I respectfully understand what uh, uh, Lydia has uh, commented. Um, with the community center locating in that space, all of Westfield, all of that space is fully committed. There's not, they're fighting over closets at this, at this point in time in Westfield. So there's mm -hmm. the full space is fully committed um, to try and move this program over there. Um, the community center is gonna have to give up space and that means they're gonna have to reduce programming. And I don't know that that's the, the avenue that the community wanted to see for the community center is to reduce programming for the community center in order to house um, another uh, town department. So it logistically within that footprint, there's, there's not enough um, space that is not, that's, that's not already committed. It is absolutely 100% fully committed so on a long-term basis. The only other option would be not renewing EastCon's lease and then the town would lose those, um, the in-kind services that we get, which would be in one year substantially more than what the cost of this building would be. $500,000 on an annual basis that the Board of Education would have to look to increase for outplacement services um, to participate in that program because that's the, that's the equivalent in what they are getting for seats in that program. That's the information I got wrote most recently from uh, the superintendent. Okay, thank you. I thought uh, from the inception of the constable program, it was whatever time period it took, but the end game was to have the 10 constables with one resident trooper when it was initiated back, that was before I had come on, but that was, uh, I thought the end game Goal. That was the primary goal, and then I think the my understanding at that time frame, I was the finance director, finance the director at the time. So again, I wasn't necessarily involved in the individual meetings that the committee was having, um, but I think that the thought process was that we would initially get to the ten and one, and then do another reassessment period, and sit down and see, all right, we're here. What are the dynamics? What has changed? where does the community need to go where does this division need to go and how does it progress from you know does it how does it progress does it stay where it's at right now what are the what are the driving factors that would um, make those decisions so we haven't achieved that goal yet and initially the goal was to get there in short five amount, years short amount of time right we're eight years out um, from that so clearly the town respectively has also recognized that it wasn't uh, feasible for them to necessarily bring on board in that in that length of time either we've had challenges fiscally as well as far as you know just um, with things that have occurred so <clears throat> and with two more placements to go you know who knows what the time period for that is as well you know the community still has to determine what is the you know time period for those two remaining placements to come into the budget and be funded 
um, and we still have to get you know response from the state with regards to whether we can officially go down to one resident state trooper right so there is still some unknowns with regards to that uh, original goal right <coughs> um, but that I think was the original that w was my understanding of what the original intent was was that that was the that was the that was the first and primary goal was to get to there and then reassess all of the factors again let's look at it all and see what are we looking at and does it need to continue to develop from there based on all of the information that we have now at the time because we're talking you know ten you know eight to ten years later from when the original evaluations were were completed and you know things change in eight to eight to ten years demands change we may get to the ten and one and be satisfied with what we have there and then right could or you may decide that you need to continue to grow f to another to a new phase but I think that that's another that's another Next community step. conversation yeah. and that <coughs> takes place through the budgetary process as well yeah. um, and we you know bring into the budgetary process whenever there is an ask for an increase in a position there's always up front th that communication about what that budget ask is mm -hmm. in each of those departments we've done that historically with all of our mm -hmm. departments and that's one thing that's been delivered deliberated on during the budgets um, as, as you mentioned we had we followed the initial plan we would have had 10 constables three years ago um, but there's been times where due to budgetary constraints we said or, or the fact of not being able to find qualified candidates it was a matter of, or attrition um, officers that have left um, which I will say under our current town manager hasn't been the issue that it was under our previous town manager. Um, I just want to throw that in there. Um, I mean, it, it's the town council has looked at, is this the right time to add another one? Is this the right time to add two? Do we stay where we're at? It, 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 it was a guideline that the previous councils and uh, Ms. Wakefield and Mr. Grandelski were on the council at the time back then. Um, that that was where they wanted it to go but things change and we've looked at all right is this the time to add it it isn't it isn't like the town council has been saying oh let's just hire 10 people at once let's bring this to 20 people at once um, and then during the budget processes it's always discussed um, the public is there um, what public does come to our budget meetings and annual town meeting um, so I mean this is it isn't like this is something we do behind closed doors where we say oh we're gonna do this this is something that we always bring to the public um, and w I, I believe we've done a decent job as far as making sure we're not um, adding three four constables just to try and catch up we look at where the budgets at is there room in the budget to add another one in is there in, in the room for a budget to add two more in? And there have been times when I've been on the council where we said, no, we're not going to do two this year. Um, there's been times where there's been an ask for two, and we said, we're only going to do one this year. Um, for whatever reasons, <laughs> that was the, the thing we've done. Um, I'll ramble, so please go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and in regards to being fiscally conservative, there was um, no mill rate increase this year. There was no mill rate increase last year. And I don't know what the previous year was for the mill rate increase. I, I'm, I love all the discussion. I, mean, I love talking Killingly Future. Um, but the reality is, is this is ARPA funds that have already been authorized to be spent. It's not going to be on a rental. We're going to own it. We're going to have the ability to turn around and sell it. Good possibility with a profit. And there's a space need. And so it just, this makes sense. And to be honest with you, I'm, you can talk to anybody at the Historical Society, they will tell you I am a Davil girl. Davil really is the dead center of Killingly. And they're going to be smack dab in the middle of Davil. So. <coughs> How many people will that building hold? With the, what do you figure the capacity is? With yeah, we could be able to accommodate between 15 to 20 within that, um, especially. That includes, that includes any um, ASOs? Administrative? 
Is that what, administrative, yeah. So we're not literally looking at having a, a, a lot of administrative staff within that um, because the, the program really doesn't need to have a lot of administrative. That's one of the benefits of having a resident state trooper program is that, you know, uh, they don't necessarily need to have a whole bunch of administrative. It does give adequate space for administrative staff, but um, as we, um, as this progresses, um, they'll be able to go more into a, a shift type situation and that, um, that uh, building will adequately manage that that level. So if the town decides to proceed, we're not going to all of a sudden go in five years. Oh, we need to find another building because it it's only going to fit ten people. Um, this will be able to will be able to land there for a good amount of time while the community makes these decisions on what's the growth, what's the rate of growth, and what's the timing of all of this. The town would have space around that. What about the ASOs? Like? So the ASOs will predominantly be located within schools, right? So those are their five positions that the Board of Education has approved. Um, they will be armed security officers for those who don't know what an ASO is. It's, I know it's a little um, jargon. So armed security officers, those are going to be predominantly, they'll be reporting to a school and they'll be located in a school. Um, there will be some equipment, uh, spare equipment that we are going to need to keep um uh that needs to be secured um and that would be housed at that uh, location um also uh they do have to go through uh recertification trainings um for what we can do in-house we, we would likely hold those trainings um at that facility some of it they have to go out like firearms training has to go out of house to um you know an authorized range in order for them to do that um weapons recertification um but there are time periods that that group is going to need to gather and they would utilize that facility for that but largely on the day-to-day -day functionality of it the admin the ad the administrator that oversees them is going to be utilizing that that space on an ongoing basis but it'll be able to appropriately secure any of their ongoing um uh, supplies and um spare equipment that they need can be secured Uh, just in listening to the public comments, it seems like, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's a misunderstanding between uh, what a police department is and what a constabulatory is, uh, uh, that one is about function, it's not about members. So we could have, you know, two in 20 constables and it would still be a constabulatory because uh, so to clarify yeah that. and and I will say throughout the state as constabulary divisions have grown they have also changed in their functionality so like Montville is still a resident state trooper constabulary program and they have 26 officers but they have they have detectives they have all of the other hierarchies along with that they um, they function more independently as almost like a municipal police department because of the depth and breadth of what they have within their uh, capacity of their organization. Um, killingly, we're still pretty small, and so we everything has to go through Troop D. If the town decides to continue to grow, um, we may be able to have alternative conversations with the state, which might change the look and feel of what our constabulary is from what it is right now to looking and feeling a little bit more like a municipal police department before we were to take but the final the final plunge if you will but that really I think would have to come with an you know some sort of investment in um, um, public safety complex similar to what Montville has done which it's taken Montville a very long time and you know I would expect that Killingly you know it's taken our original goal was five years to get to ten we're eight years and we're still only at eight you know so it's gonna take time and that's fine that's okay um, that's why we you know the purpose of finding a property like this was to really be able to allow for that that space to make changes um. Ultimately, the, the reason we did the constabulary is that people felt like we weren't getting enough coverage. Um, granted, granted, you know, having been involved with it, everybody thinks, oh, well, Troop D, 
you know, we, it's right there so they can take care of all of Killian's business. No, they got to take care of this whole region. And there's one trooper that runs the whole length of 395, which we have four exits, so that's, you know, good. And there's one that's dedicated to cover the borough because that's a high density um, incident area as well. But other than that, the troopers show up for their shift, they check in, they get report, they leave. And they go all in the area. They're not here. We now have, have eight officers that patrol up into East Killingly. I, I still remember when the, the first few Killingly cruisers went out, somebody called the town hall to report, or called Troop D or the town hall to report somebody was impersonating a police officer <laughs> because they, you know, they had never seen a police officer up in East Killingly or Attawagan or wherever they were because they, but now you see them, you see them around town. And ultimately that's gonna attract commercial business because businesses want to know that they're protected that's going to bring in people because they're going to know it's a safe community I believe Ms. Murphy was first. I just want to echo what Tammy had said earlier about it being a good investment in ARPA like I was going to say something similar but definitely not as powerful and eloquent like that that was fantastic um, and I agree with that sentiment um, uh, there was one more thing crap <laughs> oh. Yeah, just a final thought is uh, I do feel committed to what Lydia said and what we talk about all the time about the public not being able to be here and getting communication out. Like we still need to work there because the input that the public gives us is so good and important. Like this is very important. What Lydia's saying is very important. And the information that we give back, the history, is very important. So I would like to, I still feel a commitment to communication, like getting more people here. I know, I know, but I don't have um, idea. Motion to move the question. I second the motion. Motion has been made by Mr. Grandelsky, <laughs> seconded by Mr. Cartula to move the uh, question to vote. Uh, any discussion on moving the motion to vote? Seeing none. Uh, and this, all everyone here who is either a registered voter or owns uh, taxable property on the grand list over a thousand dollars can vote. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor on moving this to vote, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, at this time we have closed discussion and we are moving to a vote. Um, the vote is for the purchase of... 26 of tree. Um, for the uh, authorized purchase of the property at 26 Soap Street from United We Stand LLC for an amount of $420,000. Again, anyone who is a registered voter in Killingly or owns taxable property on the grand list that is worth more than $1,000 can vote at this time. Um, just to make it easier on everyone, I am going to ask for a hand raise when I call for a vote. That way, uh, for those of us up here, for myself, to hear everyone's votes might be difficult with you being out there. Um, so at this time, I will ask all those in favor of the purchase of the property to raise their hand. Okay, so we have seven in favor. At this time, all those who are opposed to the purchase of the property, raise your hand. Okay. So the motion passes. <laughs> oh, do we have a stem Yes. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, any abstentions? 
two. Two. Motion two. A motion passes. So at this time, we will close the. Oh, do I need a motion after a vote to close it? Yes, yeah, motion we need motion okay. to adjourn. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Now we have an attorney in the room. Yes. <laughs> As I said, this is my first time for a property sale or property purchase. Uh, okay. I'll second. Uh, motion has been made by Ms. Wakefield, seconded by Mr. Wood. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? This town meeting is adjourned. We will now move on to our regular town council meeting agenda. Um, we'll move to item two. Uh, prayer. Mr. Wood. I think after that discussion we need some prayer. Oh good. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we uh, we are grateful that we are able to have discussion and camaraderie and uh, you know, we all come together with different ideas and different thoughts and uh, but ultimately our hearts are for the town of Killingly and to uh, do what's best by the residents and by, by the people. Uh, we pray that you continue to guide our discussion. We ask that you would direct it so that uh, we can do what's best for the people that you've uh, allowed us to serve. Uh, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For roll call purposes, all council members are in attendance. Um, we'll move on to item five, adoption of minutes of previous meetings. Can I get a motion to adopt the minutes from special town council meeting November 1st? 2022 so moved and regular town council meeting november 22nd 2022 so moved i'll no second it motion has been made by ms wakefield seconded by mr katula uh discussion or corrections on these minutes seeing none all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. opposed abstentions motion carries We'll now move on to item six, proclamations, the presentations, proclamations, and declarations. This is a proclamation recognizing December 2022 is Driving Impairment Awareness Month, whereas approximately one third of all fatal traffic accidents in the United States in 2021 involved impaired drivers. The use of alcohol, marijuana, and other drugs can affect the brain by impairing motor skills, reaction time, and judgment, which are all critical while driving. And whereas impaired driving is a public health concern because it not only puts the driver at risk, but also endangers the lives and safety of passengers and others sharing the road. And whereas according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, almost twice as many impaired and fatal accidents occur on the weekend. And whereas through the exercise of good judgment, personal responsibility, and a commitment to never drive while under the influence of alcohol or drugs, every community member can play a role in the fight against impaired driving due to drunk, drugged, and distracted driving. And whereas the year-end holiday season is traditionally a time for social gatherings, which includes alcohol, whether you're driving, riding, or hosting a celebration, celebrate with a plan, designate a driver, utilize public transportation, stay the night, never drink and drive the national highway traffic safety administration as one of the as one of the deadliest and most dangerous times on american roadways due to an increase in impaired driving we must all recognize the danger impaired driving can pose for drivers passengers and all others sharing the road and encourage our communities to identify develop and promote solutions to this critical issue that takes away thousands of lives every year and now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Town Council of the Town of Killingly that the month of December <coughs> is hereby recognized as Driving Impairment Awareness Month and encourage our citizens to celebrate with a plan and pledge to increase awareness for the dangers of impaired driving.
Killingly Town Council, Jason Anderson, Chairman, dated at Killingly, Connecticut, this 13th day of December 2022. So now we'll move on to the agenda. Next item up is item seven, unfinished business for town meeting action, which we already did that earlier in the agenda. So we will move on to item eight, citizen statements and petitions. Uh, Ms. Caloria, did we have any other comments submitted? We had nothing. We had no other comments submitted. Okay. Um, at this time, we'll open up for public comment. Um, <laughs> anyone who would like to come speak, you can speak about anything. Uh, you're, you're not stuck to tonight's agenda. So please come up and speak. This is your time. Just state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, I'm Addison King. I live on 849 Upper Maple Street, and I'm here from Kinley High School for my American citizenship class. And I want to talk about the heating in my school because in certain places it is quite hot. One of my classes has a um, thermometer in it, and it said it was 85 degrees, which I don't know about you, but it's kind of hard to focus on my work when it's that hot and then another one of my classes on the other side of the school it's like 50 something degrees so it's kind of drastic um and it's really hard to focus when you keep going from 50 degrees to 80 and i don't know what's going on but today the school blood drive got canceled because how cold it was because the workers weren't able to work in the conditions of our gym because of how cold it was so there's probably something up with that um yeah so i don't know what you guys heard about our school's heating and cooling system because it's not working the best at the moment and i was wondering what you guys knew about that um that's all i have thank you thank you Would anyone else like to come up and speak? Well, the other person, when you you want to speak now during the public, because I think you were speaking at the time of, of our other item, would you want to come up again? And now you will be part of the record. Oh, yeah. So my name is Andrew Suyamath. And I'm another student of Killingley High School. I'm, I live at 35A Franklin Street, Danielson. And yeah, the heating problem is an issue, along with the shortages of teachers and sometimes busing as well. Like last year, I missed a week of school due to the busing, and many other students missed school as well for longer durations of time. And yeah, so that shortage of teachers will cause issues for the lives of pe people in the future, including today and future generations because of the lack of informa information that can be gained from these teachers which are essential to our lives. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay. Hi, my name is Lila Bodro. I go to school at Killingly High School and I live at 543 Quince Hill Road in Dayville, and I'd like to talk about the security at my school. Last year, we received uh, some numerous of threats, and I don't know about you, but I would like to feel comfortable knowing that I'm going to school every day, being safe, and not having to worry about something happening or, so, or not being able to go home. And I just want to know if there's something that you guys are doing or something that's going to happen to keep the keeps um, the students safe and yeah that's all I have thank you thank you very much any other public comment last call for public comment we'll now move on in the agenda next item up on the agenda is item 9 council and staff comments um, I would like to speak to a couple of these things. Um, I know we have been struggling. Um, Board of Ed has been struggling to onboard teachers. Um, this isn't just a kill only problem. This is definitely a, a regional, statewide, and, and 
to my knowledge, national problem as well. The same thing is, hire, is for hiring bus drivers. Killingly isn't the only town that's had issues bringing on bus drivers as well. Um, the Board of Ed um, did authorize, I believe it was a uh, temporary increase in pay um, last year to try and bring bus drivers on. Um, I think so. Yeah, too. I believe it was $25 an hour. Um, so, I mean, this is, this is a problem we are aware of. It's not just the council. It's the Board of Ed is well aware of this as well. Um, and But it isn't a killingly specific problem. This is a problem that everybody is dealing with at the same time. And it's not just limited to teachers and bus drivers. It's trying to find employees across um, all different types of employment is extremely difficult right now. Um, as far as the security at the school, um, I do remember we were going through a time when there was a, a lot of alerts at the school. Um, and the Board of Ed has actually taken steps to try and increase security at the schools. I, I am glad that they did. Um, the onboarding of the, the five different ASOs will definitely help with increasing um, security at the schools. We just completed that job description um, creation, so I'll be publicly posting the openings of those five positions. So we'll be starting to accept applications and hopefully getting those position, those five positions filled. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I believe Mr. Grandelsky was Go first. Ahead. Go ahead, Mr. I Grandelsky. would recommend that uh, you folks also bring your issues to the Board of Ed meetings. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we look at some of them, but they're the ones that are more directly involved and I, I appreciate you coming forward here. That's a big step. It takes a lot to get up there. <laughs> but I would also recommend, you know, going to the Board of Ed meeting and reinforcing what's going on. Thank you. I believe that was going to be my comment exactly. Uh, the Board of Ed meets tomorrow night <laughs> at 7 o'clock here in this room, and they, and they would they may not even be aware of some of those Board of Ed members of the heating in, at the school. Uh, but that, I mean, we can work past this along, but that would have a bigger impact right at the Board of Ed. But I appreciate you coming to the meeting tonight and sitting through this first hour and 45 minutes of <laughs> stuff. <laughs> 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 a, a good <laughs> civics class. <laughs> Ms. Wakefield. I would also like to um, address the students that came. Um, I'm, I want to thank you for bringing these issues because sometimes we don't find out what's going on at the at the in the different schools. So mm -hmm. um, we're supposed to have a board of ed liaison that's supposed to report to us, but we don't. We haven't had it in the last few months. So thank you for coming forward and doing, even if it is your homework assignment. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wood, just really echoing all the comments there. Thank you for coming out and not being afraid to get up to that podium because I know Mr. like Mr. Grandowski has said multiple times there it is nerve-wracking to get up there even even if I get up there let me tell you sometimes I'm, I'm afraid of what I'm going to say um, but uh, you know I appreciate you coming out and bringing up these concerns and like Ms. Wigfield said sometimes we really don't know until people say something to us they're just you know the, I think that's one thing that people assume is that we we have this crystal ball that we're able to look into and find out all the problems in town and we just don't know until it said so we, I do appreciate you coming out and suffering through the last two hours uh, but you've done well <laughs> thank you mr. Whitehead again I'd like to echo as well but also I'd like to point out to you guys you, you really need to be involved you really you guys are doing a great job you really need to be involved in your community I mean just think we we, we just voted on seven hundred thousand dollar project and it was two people here from the from the town to vote on that you know that's that's a that's a big impact on the town it's a it's a moving forward it's but it's I commend you guys for for coming out and and participating if we keep in mind you need to do that continuously that's what a community is about and I'd like to add to that um, I mean there are different ways you can be involved with your town um, whether it's coming to speaking at meetings um, or as you get older um, we're always looking for volunteers on our boards and commissions. <laughs> so it's without all our without the volunteers we have on our boards and commissions, um, it's extremely difficult for the town to conduct all the business it needs to do. Um, so with that being said, is there any other comments? I believe we've covered about everyone. Okay. 
and I'd just like to thank you again for coming forward and with your comments um, I myself know how nerve-wracking it can be coming up to that podium I will never forget my first time coming up there going back seven years ago um, and it doesn't get much easier <laughs> it's much easier to sit on this side I will say that um, so at this point we will move on or, okay I just wanted to say if you, can you guys bring a message back to your teacher and say thank you so much for encouraging his his or her students to get involved that's wonderful you guy you all did a great job but thank your teacher too thanks thank you any other comments all right seeing none we'll now move on in the agenda next item up is item 10a appointment appointments to boards and commissions um, I will entertain uh, and I apologize ahead of time if I mispronounce anyone's <laughs> last names or first names uh, <laughs> Thanks. Um, first up is 10a Michael LeHue is seeking reappointment to the Board of Rec um, as a regular member his term would run from January 1st 2023 through December 31st 2024 Ms. Gloria, are those numbers right? Yes, it's a two-year term. All of 23 okay. and yep. all of 24. Yep. It's it, a two-year it, term. It, it, I had two-year term, and I saw 23 and 24, and it threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We did a lot it's of finger counting night. on that one. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. LeHughes, has, he has served on the Board of Rec since September 2020. Uh, his attendance in his first term has been reliable, missing one meeting with notice. The Board of Rec has one alternate member vacancy available. Uh, can I get a motion to reappoint Mr. LeHue? So moved. Second. A uh, motion has been made by Ms. Wakefield, seconded by Mr. Wood. Discussion? I, that's a great board. They're super active. There's, they ask a lot of good questions. And kind of like our students that showed up tonight, they're, the newer members that we've appointed in the last few years are starting to understand all the what it takes to get something accomplished and all the ins and outs of the budget process and how how things get you know when you make a decision here and it gets impacted over here so um, it they're they're learning fast about how the town how the town functions and uh, Mr. Lou who um, does is definitely involved thank you any other comments Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We'll now move on. Next mm -hmm. item up is item 10B. Kyle Sedora is seeking reappointment to the Permanent Building Commission. As a regular member, his term would run from December 16, 2022 through December 15, 2026. Mr. Zadori has served on the Permanent Building Commission since 2010 as an alternate. He became a regular member in January 2015. Mr. Zadori's attendance has been consistent with no absenteeism during his recent term. Uh, the Permanent Building Commission has one alternate member vacancy available. Uh, can I get a motion to reappoint Mr. Zadora? I'll make that motion. No second. A motion has been made by Mr. Hatula, seconded by Mr. Grandelsky. Discussion? He's, uh He's a very integral member of that board, so he uh, is very knowledgeable with the trades also, as, his, as he does for a, uh, he works in the trades also. So I recommend 100% that he's reappointed. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. We'll now move on to item 10C. Uh, William Mangi is interested in being reappointed as a regular member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. His term would run from February 1st, 2023 through January 31st, 2028. Um, he served on the Zoning Board of Appeals since April of 2006. He has missed one meeting with notice in the most recent term. The Zoning Board of Appeals has one regular member and three alternate member vacancies available. Can I get a motion to reappoint Mr. Mangi? Make the motion. I'll second. Motion has been made by Mr. Wood, seconded by Mr. Grandelsky. I will open it up for discussion. 
Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We'll now move on in the agenda. We'll move on to item 10D. Uh, Aaron Achenbach is interested in being appointed as regular member of the Agriculture Commission. There are currently two regular member and three alternate vacancies available. Uh, the regular terms run for three years. <coughs> I will look for a motion to appoint Ms. Achenbach to the regular term that runs from November 1st, 2022 through October 31st of 2025. Second. Motion has been made by Ms. Murphy, seconded by Mr. Wood. Uh, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We'll now move on in the agenda. Next item up is 10E. Holly Blade is seeking appointment to the Board of Rec as an alternate member. There is currently one alternate vacancy available. The alternate term would run from two years and would run from March 1st of 2022 through February 25th of 2024. Uh, can I get a motion to uh, appoint Ms. Blade? So moved. I'll second. Motion has been made by Ms. Wakefield, seconded by Ms. George. I will open up for discussion. She's already active. Um, she told us that, you know, she's been involved with the theater program. Um, she's already um, volunteering and doing other things other than just the theater program. Um, and uh, she definitely, she definitely isn't going to, she knows that there's a lot of work. And I think she'll be a good member. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We'll now move on to item 10F. Claudette Rogers is seeking appointment to the Conservation Commission. Um, as a regular member, um, she is aware that there are only alternate member vacancies available on that commission. So I will look for a motion to appoint Ms. Rogers to an alternate uh, term that would run for two years and it would run from November 1st, 2022 through October 31st of 2024. I'll so make that motion. Second. Motion has been made by Mr. Grandelsky, seconded by Mr. Wood. Uh, any discussion? She's come to a number of meetings and she's participated and it's an active group. You know, Donna Bromwell gets somebody in, and it, it's very good. You know, they they're engaged right away. There's there's no, you know. I mean, it, yeah, you got to learn a little bit, but I mean, you're, come on in. So it's, it's good. Yeah, it's a fantastic group. I think Claudette's going to do wonderful. She's going to fit right in. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions? Motion carries. We'll now move on to item 10G. Uh, Daniel Baugh is seeking appointment to the Historic District Commission. There are currently one regular member and three alternate vacancies available. Uh, regular terms would run for five years. The available term would run from April 1st, 2020 through March 31st, 2025. And uh, Mr. Baugh is interested in being appointed as either a regular member or alternate member. Um, I will say the next item up is uh, uh, she is looking for to be appointed as a regular member. Um, she did not indicate um, in her application that she wanted to serve as an alternate member. So I will look for a motion. Um, to appoint Mr. Baugh, and I will look for an indication when you make that motion as to whether it will be a regular or alternate member. I'll make a motion to, for Mr. Baugh to be an alternate member of the uh, Historic District Committee. A second. I have a motion and a second, and just for clarification, that would be 
the alternate term runs three years and the term would run from April 1st 2022 through March 31st of 2023 or excuse me 25 need glasses <laughs> years years <laughs> um, so we've got a motion and a second I will open up for discussion seeing none all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. opposed abstentions motion carries we'll now move on in the agenda the next item up is item 10 H Jane Bullock is seeking appointment to the Historic District Commission as a regular member. The regular term runs for five years. The term would run from April 1st, 2020 through March 31st, 2025. Uh, can I get a motion to appoint Ms. Bullock? So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Mr. Wood, seconded by Ms. George. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We'll now move on in the agenda. Next item up is 10I. Paul Archer is seeking appointment to the Inland Wetlands Water Commission as a regular member. The regular term runs for three years. Um, the term would run from May 1st, 2022 through March 30th 2025 uh, can I get a motion to appoint mr. Archer I'll make that motion second motion has been made by mr. Grandelsky seconded by mr. Wood I will open up for discussion <coughs> this is probably watching with bated breath yeah. and just, just for clarification for the, the term <laughs> ends on April 30th not March 30th it's April 30th of 2025 right. I just want to make apologize. sure that that's clear for the group I it's getting late <laughs> <laughs> so this is a critical appointment you I know mean. now they're gonna because the other person was tied in with the uh, um, veterans coffee, coffee house, house and uh, his heart was in that not in this and now they got at least they, at least they can have a quorum so we still got to get yep. more people to uh, pursue the uh, absolutely because in the wetlands um, I didn't state, but there are currently four regular member and two alternate member vacancies available. Um, so this is something I am deaf. I'm glad to see all these people that came forward this month looking to serve on these boards and commissions. Um, as a council, as chairman and as a council member, I am uh, thankful for all our volunteers um, who make uh, the community what it is. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We'll now move on to the agenda. Next item up is 10J. Sean Regan is seeking appointment to the Northeast Department District of Health. As a regular member, there are currently one regular member and one alternate member vacancies available. Uh, the regular term runs for three years. The term would run as follows from May 1st of 2022 through April 30th of 2025, not 20,025. <laughs> hey, you know, I think I've looked at this piece of paper five times too. Can I get a motion to appoint Mr. Regan? I'll make that motion. I'll second, I'll second it. Uh, motion has been made by Mr. Grandelsky, uh, Grand Grandelsky, seconded by Mr. Cretula. Yeah. No. Uh, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Again, I would just like to thank everyone who came forward this month looking to volunteer on our boards and commissions. Um, uh, we are very grateful for all of those who volunteer for this community. So we'll now move on to item 11A, uh, reports from liaisons, and I do not see a Board of Education liaison here. Um, we'll move on to item 11B, Borough Council liaison. The borough has not met, so they will meet next Wednesday. So. Due to the delay in our regular town council meeting last month. Yes, you got that two weeks ago. Yes. <laughs> 
Okay, we'll move on to the agenda. Item 12A, discussion and acceptance of monthly budget reports. Uh, can I get a motion to accept the summary report on general fund appropriations for town government? So, so moved. moved. I'll second. A uh, motion has been made by Mr. Wood, seconded by Ms. George. Uh, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We'll now move on to item 12B. And if I may, on item 12B, you do not have anything. The Board of Education, because they only have one meeting in November, did not have financials to transmit over to the Town Council, so you do not have financials for the Board of Education. For this month, you'll start getting caught up next month because they have one meeting also in the month of December as well. So you do not have anything for the next item. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to the agenda. Next item up is 13A, Town Manager's Report. And I'll make this pretty short and sweet because um, I just gave you a report only two weeks ago. Um, and I did take a week off for Thanksgiving or mostly take a week off for Thanksgiving. So <laughs> um, uh, just to give you guys an update, uh, the access is no free shelter that's at the St. Albans Church location. That is officially open for the uh, winter season. It opened on December 1st. They did email an update. It'll be open now um, daily um, from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. until April 1st. So that's the time period in which that um, and the town, the town of Killingly does assist and support for that um, no free shelter, um, and it, it does provide a, a great service. Currently, they're averaging six guests per night um, at that facility right now, so that's the utilization right now. Um, I did want to bring to the attention of the council that the organizers of Springfest, um, that's been um, that's an independent organization. Um, they are a separate 501c3. They've been that has always been an independent organization from the town that organizes and manages that festival. Um, they have approached uh, or uh, communicated with with me um, <coughs> that they um, they've asked whether or not the town is interested in taking over the event. Um, we had a meeting with them back in October. Um, and reviewed what you know what they were really asking about um, they decided in that October meeting that they wanted to still maintain the organization and maintain managing the festival um, independently although they um, there is some they requested some information around uh, the cost for traffic control um, it is a major impact to route 12 um, especially with rolling closures of route 12 for different phases of their festival um, <clears throat> and last year that uh, did pose some challenges with um, what they had for availability of their own uh, qualified eligible individuals that could perform that so um, the town really would need to um, provide the um, staff to be able to properly and adequately close those roads appropriately um, and safely um, so I uh, developed what those costs were. He'd given me a list of just before Thanksgiving, he reached out again with a whole bunch of additional questions, varying around if they changed times, if they consolidate, you know, shortened the duration of the event, if they did all these things. So I've answered um, his different scenarios with regards to traffic control costs and law enforcement costs. I don't know what direction that um, the organization is going to look to take. Um, in his question in their questions with regards to whether or not the town is willing to take it over and make it an annual event i have indicated that that would have to go first to the board of rec commission for them to evaluate what that is in totality with all of their other programming and make recommendation to the town council and ultimately it would come to town council for determination on funding um, because it would be a funding um, caught there would be costs associated with uh, the development of that and how that impacts um, other um, other events that we're also holding you know um, uh, in close proximity of time to that event so um, that's not a question I can answer you know without going through those other bodies which that hasn't taken place so I'm waiting to see what their response is um, to better understand what path forward they want to mm -hmm. go down um, Westfield Avenue they did um, do an investigation of the exterior envelope of the building um, uh, to, to really um, 
look at the uh, brick veneer as well as the roofing material. Um, they uh, have just completed their um, report on that and they'll be presenting that to the Permanent Building Commission when the Permanent Building Commission meets on the 21st. So um, they will be reviewing all of that information to the, with the Permanent Building Commission. Um, and uh, they've also met the design and the design team has now met with all of the stakeholders each of the primary users of that building to better understand the, utiliz the individual stakeholders utilization as well as space demands for each of their programs so that way we can coordinate and better understand um, so we've gone through all of those components um, and then lastly um, the project included the expansion of parking in that um, uh, vacant lot area towards the VOAG side of the building, that front, uh, it's a grass wooded lot that's on the left hand side when you come up the VOAG um, entrance. Um, that you're going to start to see this week, they're clearing it. So they're going to, they're removing all of the trees. It's going to be turned into a gravel lot for right now. So it's an eventually going to be turned into a paved lot, but it'll be used as a gravel lot for staging the construction. Um, uh, uh, trailer as well as parking for the construction teams for both the KMS project and the Westfield project so that way we're not impacting you know KMS already has very tight constraints on parking as it is with just staff to incorporate all of um, uh, construction teams uh, parking needs it would be very challenging so we've decided to move forward with clearing that lot and beginning the preparation process that lot was always intended to be done by town staff and so town staff is out there um, they flagged the trees two weeks ago before Thanksgiving um, so they'll be in the process of removing those so you may um, see some of those trees start to come down and there's there's a whole bunch in there that they're going to take off um, the auditors um, have just begun their preliminary field work for the audit process. They began doing some of the school. Uh, there's a report that the school has to file with the state. It's called the EDO-01. In um, uh, August, they have to do special testing around that. They began that process, the very early stages of that field work, um, uh, last week. Um, they expect to really begin the in-depth auditing field work beginning of January. So um, we're hoping to be able to have that wrapped up and completed through the month of January. Um, and that'll depend on, you know, how um, the, the availability of all the information. Um, and then I just gave you the listing of uh, the meetings that I've been attending. And then lastly, there's two upcoming ribbon cuttings. They're both for December 15th. Um, back to back so um, hopefully um, some of you might be able to attend one is for Wizard of Paws pet grooming um, and that's going to be at that's at State Ave um, that's at 3 3 30 in the afternoon and then at 4 30 Killingly Service Center is uh, doing a ribbon cutting at 432 Putnam Pike so if you're able to come out and celebrate you know two new you know businesses that are um, opening in our community in supporting them on the on the audit are we on time or how, how is this so we're on extension so the state and we've been on extension now for um, several years but um, so the state has our first at the the initial deadline is December 31st you can do a one-month extension which gets you to January 31st and you can do one month extensions thereafter um, some of the delay uh, most of the delay has been um, in the more recent years has been in having the Board of Education's all of their information ready for the auditors to come out and get through all of their information um, that has taken some time um, and that's been reiterated within the audit process um, to you that's as communication right, that right. was communicated that to you guys up. last year um, that's what we're seeing again this year um, uh, that you know there's there's not overly ready and so one of the things that you have to understand for auditing purposes I, I used to do municipal audits um, when you have you know 169 towns that all have to get audited at the same time um, and there's only so many firms that can audit municipalities um, when they know that you're late and you're you're not ready for them early in the 
in the season so you're not ready for them in September or October for them to begin their audit process it begin the field work they automatically schedule you schedule you for later in the season right you're automatically down there because they know that you're not going to be ready for them it doesn't make sense for them to come out and start field work that they're gonna have to completely redo when you're actually ready for them to do the work right so um, you get scheduled towards the tail end and it's an automatic there are certain towns that it's automatic you're going to be on extension so until we have you know we've made some progress on that um, I think you know the board of, the board of eds uh, financial financial team has tried to make progress on that um, and hopefully we can get the audit wrapped up in January it wouldn't surprise me if we end up having to go to one more extension into February just for that final and close out so it may be that we have to do the one month extension but they issue it like the very beginning of February just to um, make that timing but um, ideally um, you know when I first came here as a finance director Killingly was always on extension we were always issuing the audit in the end of January we were able to finally move that and I was able to get it issued in December um, that changed and shifted again um, and we're back to being out on extension again and the team is trying to move that dial back and it takes some time to move that dial back but um, you know so so that's where we're at with it we're likely really gonna hopefully be able to get to um, uh, the audit completion in January which means you won't be getting the audit presented to you until February mr. wood considering this has been brought up already tonight and remind me because I think you do this already but I don't remember entirely quarterly in your reports do you put the crime statistics the calls for service or constabulary does things like that um, I've been trying to put that into you yeah. on a quarterly basis I will say that I haven't necessarily been um, fantastic in meeting those quarterly goals so I will try and do better at putting that out I, I know that uh, just today some of my staff completed some of those call statistics for me so on your my next manager's report I should be able to provide that information again but yes I've been trying to my goal was to get it to quarterly I will say I haven't always met that quarterly goal right I, I thought I remember seeing that before at least in a few managers yes. reports there so I just want to kind of just throw that out there because I know that's one question that we are asked often is yeah. what, what are our constabulary what our constabulary does and I know Miss Rivera Abrams there she mentioned the, the numbers there and I finally did it all my the math in my head and that's around almost 25 uh, 230 calls a month if not more uh, for service. I did the math in my head and I came up with uh, okay. 330 yeah because yeah. roughly it's 3900 a year divided in a quarter uh, see I was going at 7,000 that's why I'm a little lower Mary yeah it's a we're a very active community yeah. um, so it they are um, Right. And that's that's not all crime either that's right uh, and and yeah. that doesn't and that that doesn't account for all of the time that's spent investigating um, sure. and and you know all the time dealing with the court around the matters and and all of that so there's a lot more that goes into it but than just a singular call right that initial call for service well they may still have there's lots, it, of, lots of other stuff that goes along with that yeah. So to go along with that now that seven that almost eight thousand number that's just what our constables did. that's just our constables so I know when we had a uh, way way back when public safety would get the actual monthly numbers from the D from troop D um, the all the killing calls the whole lump of them right um, I think that would really yeah so change perspective of a lot of people yeah so our constables if I you know looking at what those statistic numbers have been on a quarterly basis our constables have been managing roughly 50% of the call volume <coughs> for Killingly so the call volume for Killingly is probably is, is double that for Killingly it's just our our constables are handling 50% of the call volume you know and that I mean think about the number of individuals that we have that are managing that level of call volume yeah so roughly 20 calls a day when, when you do the quick math any other comments seeing none we'll move on in the agenda 
Uh, next item up is 14, and we have nothing for, we have no unfinished business for town council action. Um, so we'll move on to item 15A, consideration and action on a resolution accepting financial assistance in the form of a million dollar grant and aid for the Connecticut Department of Economic Community Development for downtown revitalization and authorizing the town manager to execute documents and furtherance and acceptance and accepting said grant. Uh, can I get a motion to adopt this resolution? So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Ms. Wakefield, second by Mr. Wood. Uh, Ms. Calorio, can you go over this? This is the Brickyard Project again, yeah. right? So I feel like we keep having to go down this road. Um, and so this is, so truthfully, this is the required form by DECD um, in the um, contracting phase. And so although you have already approved us to submit for the grant you've already appropriated the funds for the matching pieces of this um, we have to also formally in their language which is why it's this weird looking resolution because this is the exact form that they require it on um, for you to formally in their language accept it and then I think that we're ready to roll on that project <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments, questions from council? Um, I just want to say I'm very glad to see this project going forward. I think it's going to be a huge improvement for the town. I think Jill will be doing cartwheels after. after yes, and I, I do, on behalf of the rest of the council, I do want to thank Jill and her department for all the work <coughs> you've done on yes. moving this project forward. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We'll now move on to the agenda. Next item up is item 15B, consideration and action on the resolution, the resolution authorizing the transfer of up to $2,500 from the contingency account to the town hall contractual services support account to decommissioning the electric vehicle charging station at the town hall. Uh, can I get a motion to adopt this? So moved. Motion has been made by Mr. Wood, seconded by Ms. Barclay. Uh, Ms. Calorio, if you could go over this, please. So this was requested at the last council meeting, um, what it would take to essentially turn off the existing EV charging station that we have located here at the town hall. So that uh, EV charging station was installed in 2014-15 uh, through a grant that was uh, most of the towns around um, received funding under that. The stipulation under that grant was that for the first three years, towns weren't allowed, were not allowed to pass through charges to those that were actually charging their vehicles on it. But we had to absorb those costs. After that, we would be able to charge. In that grant process, we didn't get the option to choose what equipment was installed and the equipment that was installed was not compatible with other uh, with um, card reading systems in order to be able to charge out um, uh, going forward so um, in 2017 we we had investigated adding a device to that unit to be able to charge and um, we that was when we were um, we were made aware that the device, uh, w our device that we have, it was not compatible to be able to allow for that configuration um, <clears throat> without essentially replacing the entire EV charging station. Um, we have submitted the grant to Eversource. We have not received a response yet from Eversource. We haven't received a, a, a response as far as funding commitment on from Eversource. We know that they're analyze they're reviewing our request. Um, so the existing unit utilizes six kilowatts of electricity per hour uh, when charging a vehicle. Um, so it's a it's a, a slow charger. Based on our observation, and this is I you know talked to a number of town hall departments that kind of have views out to that window, and they, you know, I think they can tell me every vehicle make and model that plugs into it because there's we just don't have that many. Um, but uh, to just try and gauge what's the approximate utilization of it, how how many hours a day do we think somebody's actually plugged into it? And so we decided um, the the consensus was that um, 
uh, it's used approximately four hours a day and that's on a conservative side that's probably high um, utilization um, there are days that nobody plugs into it at all but there are you know days that it is maybe used a little bit more than that so based on our current electrical costs the approximate cost of the to the town is um, a little over twelve dollars a day based on our current cost um, so I looked at what would it cost, what would it take to decommission, what would it take to shut it off. So the, the current system, while it has separate breakers, they don't have lockout tagouts. And so the rec that we contacted uh, an, ele uh, an electrician, the recommendation was because it doesn't have a lockout tagout that can officially secure it, the recommendation was to fully decommission it, which means to remove the, the, um, the uh, entire unit so somebody doesn't have any um, uh, no risk of injury because there's no ability for lockout tagout. So we asked for uh, estimations around that. We would use town staff to, you know, rem once it's once it's de-energized, have town staff assist with the actual removal so it would minimize reduce the cost. But um, we're estimating that to be about twenty three hundred dollars. Um, so the request is for. Uh, 2500 if that's the, what the council wants to do is to decommission it um, is $2,500 thank you um, it says in the resolution about the cost for the um, if the, we were received the grant to replace that it would be covered the removal of that do we have any idea when we might hear from the grant one way or the other so I would expect that we're probably going to hear from them in the next month or two. I mean, it's kind of over the holidays. Eversource can, you know, it's sometimes, you know, departments are slow. Um, but again, I don't have a firm timeline on that. I don't know when Eversource is going to get back to us on that. So I don't have a definitive timeline as to when we know definitively what the eligibility is for a replacement on that. Thank you. Mr. Grandelsky. I mean, to spend, like, Mr. Cotula was saying if we get the new grant, that'll, that would take this old one out. Um, can we get an electrician to change the circuit breaker to put a lockout tag out on it or just disconnect it? And so that's, what we, that's why we reached out to an electrician, and this was what their response was, was to decommission it and remove it. And so that's what the 2500 we'd have to hire an electrician to come in and uh, uh, de-energize. That's that's the feedback that we got from the electrician. So that's twenty five, twenty three hundred dollars for them to go into the box and pull the cable off is twenty three hundred dollars. And disconnect anything out at the actual um, uh, EV charging location as well, and secure anything as far as wiring out at the actual pedestal because you're not going to pull all of that wiring completely out. We would remove the actual unit from uh, the from what's out there we would remove it but that's the town that's going to remove it right after it's de-energized yes so it's so basically they're just pulling pulling, pulling all the wires out and putting a plug in for the into the breaker box yep that's a bit excessive i would think well that's pretty high. Yeah, that's that's what you got. I mean, so, I can put a whole so service you, in for, for the went to <laughs> I, I no, So if the math is, so if it's 12.05 a day, roughly, we're paying a little under 4,500 a year? Did I do yes, the math correct. correctly? Yes, correct. And how long has that been out there? Um, that has been out there since uh, 2015. 14, 15. And I will say for the first two years, it was mostly not operational. Um, because it was broken more than I think anybody that is around here it was broken broken more often than it was functioning they had to keep flying people out from California to work on it because nobody locally could work on it no it, they it was only the company that provided the system and they had to keep flying this one guy out <coughs> from California I think he came out like six or seven times so it's safe to assume and I know I'm gonna get in trouble for this that whoever's using that station can find another one locally somewhere you can use your and own. we can save you can use your own plug at home oh you can yes. see i don't know anything well, about them unless so you're at a rental unit then that can become difficult let's assume they can find another station and we can knock 44 i would assume whoever purchased an ev vehicle didn't 
solely rely on the one yeah, charger. On the, the well, that's wall. what I'm saying. Well, considering so, it only charges so six kilowatts an hour, and we're only yeah. seeing people plugged in for you know an hour here and there, it's not like somebody's getting a full charge off of that yeah. charger. And, we're, and with that, it's just not happening. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the local business owners. So with that being said, it's costing us 4400 4500 a year. Um, but it's only a couple more months to see if the grant would cover it. Yeah. So to me, it would make sense to wait a couple more months. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to kill us if we can get it done for free. Well, I'll make and a that motion seems to high, uh, 2500 uh, Can I? Sure. Can we, can um, we continue commented oh. yet? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, I just have questions. I know, like, looking at our uh, sustainable Connecticut plaque we have up there, are there any designations the town has that removing that could cost us that designation if such designation allows us to apply for grants we wouldn't normally be able to apply for without that designation? So, um, <laughs> sustainable CT. Um, sustainable CT, one of their, clearly one of the... Um, one of the uh, areas in which the town can gain points in order to maintain our certification is in the main maintenance of or expansion of EV charging locations, right? That is definitely one of the components. Uh, killingly, um, we're actually up for, in this upcoming year, we're up for recertification. So we would need to be demonstrating um, our ability to maintain our certification level at our existing bronze certification. Um, there is funding. Um, there is funding opportunities under Connecticut sustain under sustainable um, CT, largely matching components. Um, you know, you can do um, farming initiatives, uh, like community garden initiatives, that they will also do matching funds too. So there are potential grant opportunities we could avail ourselves from. That if we do not have the designation, it doesn't prohibit us completely but it does limit our capacity in order to be able to access that um, that availability that being said we the town has not yet afforded themselves the opportunity to move forward with any projects under sustainable CT as far as grant opportunity but we would potentially limit ourselves we are getting ready to go into the recertification process and I know having sat on the sustainable CT board for several years EV chargings is one of the um, one of the ways in which communities can gain points to maintain or or elevate their certification levels. So, what year do we start paying this? Do we start paying for the electricity for that charging station? When it got installed, I think it was 2015. Well, I will say that utilization hasn't been the same since the beginning. I mean, in the beginning, there was nobody using it for a, a long time. Nobody used it. I would say that the, the current utilization that you see now really has only been like this for the last two years. So we can't install lockout breakers? Again, I'm passing through the information that we got from an electrician that we brought in to look at what is here and what the recommendation was. And the recommendation was to decommission and remove the system. Not just install tag, lockout, tag out, but to decommission the system. So we could That's what was recommended by the electrician that we brought in. So we could take and lock out and tag out those breakers because they do make them. <coughs> and then we could wait two months and have the, and see if we get the, get the grant not get the grant. I just think we've been paying all this long to taxpayers have been paying for one percent. I mean I'm not gonna say it again. I mean I said it a million times. We're paying for the one percent to charge our cars. And you have little Johnny across the street who can't afford to pay his electricity but yet you have a fifty hundred thousand dollar car charging their car for free. I think it's a I think it's bad. I think it's irresponsible. Mm -hmm. So if we can take I could I could get an estimate to fix something, and I could make it ten times what it, what we really need to do. But if we really want to just disconnect it, there's an easier path to do it. I I can go back to my engineering department again. I I relayed your concerns and your requests from your last meeting 
to the engineering department. They went to the, they called in an electrician because we don't have licensed electricians on staff. We called in an electrician to review what we have here and that was the recommendation. So that's what I brought back before you. I can go back to the engineering department and go back to the electrician and see what other options and alternatives there might be. Yeah, but don't we have to get three bids? Um, we so we would get three quotes. We don't have to get three bids. Oh, whatever. I mean. So three quotes, yes. But again, when we're only looking at getting estimates, we don't go out and get three different estimates. Um, so you tend to get people not respond to you at, at that point. Maybe the question is we have to ask, we have to ask the right question just to put Which we did. We, we did. We asked to just disconnect, not remove it. We asked if we wanted to just disconnect it what would be the recommendation and just that was the recommendation that was presented to us so again i'll go back i have no problem with going back I'm just saying disconnect and no problem and going back it off completely two different things i'll go back so i i don't disagree by any means there that uh you know there's nothing free in life and the taxpayer is paying for somebody to charge their vehicle I don't think it's right. There should be a service fee. Uh, but I, I also don't think spending $2,500 when Eversource could come back and say, hey, here's your grant. Oh, you already decommissioned it? Well, tough luck. You're not getting your money back. Uh, that, that, to me, doesn't make any sense either to waste that kind of money. Um, so I think we should honestly, I would make a motion to table this item um, to our next meeting at least to give time for Eversource to... Uh, to uh, get back to us. Can I'd I rather see a motion go up to say, ask the electrician if to put a lockout tag out if we spend a couple hundred bucks. Well, if we give another month, we can also give her time to go talk to another electrician. How much was it a month? It's, oh, I went a year. A it's twelve oh five a day, $12.05 a day. So I just did for the year. Three, so three, it comes out to about 4400 yeah, potentially, <coughs> the average. So even if we leave it right now, I mean, we've been so paying that for so how long? If we, we leave it right now until we know if we're getting a grant, that makes right. sense. So to we me. spend twenty five hundred dollars now. Eversource comes back and says, "Hey, we'll do this." Yeah, it makes we've no wasted twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make but sense. But you, you're talking scope of work is completely different, right? No, you're no, talking we're completely, completely dismantling something, as opposed to putting a lockout tag out breaker. In. Cor this, this completely correct, different. but it, if we just vote on this right now, th then it's done. The problems the, the, either we, we spend the $2,500 now or we don't spend the $2,500 now. This doesn't give Mary the time to go back to another electrician and say, hey, can you do this? That That's the concern right now. now so do we spend the money or do we not spend the money? Mm -hmm. One other thing I'd like to add, too, is can we, when, it, when you're talking about charging a vehicle, can you just shut off the breaker without someone plugging in and causing some kind of damage to the vehicle? Can that vehicle, is there, and I'm an, I'm an ASC certified technician and I can't even answer the question as to when someone plugs in, if the other end, um, depending on how it's set up at the other end. And they discharge into the building? That would be my question. Well, because you really you got you've got a hot, you've got a neutral in the ground. The breaker is only on one of those wires. That's the other thing. That's the other question. That's why we would need to find out from an electrician: Can we just put a breaker, shut a breaker off, and not risk back feeding into it? Maybe that's why they recommended decommission. That's a possibility. That's a possibility as well. I will say the electrician <laughs> that they went to, I, they've been pretty straightforward and upfront. So I don't, I, I don't think that they're looking to soak the town for money, right? Well, I, but right I will question. ask. Yeah. I will ask them. I will go back. I have no problem going back and asking if so, what so your concerns so and questions are. So we got a motion to table uh, from Mr. Wood, a second from Ms. Wakefield. Um, discussion as far as tabling this are we tabling until we know if there's a grant potential 
or are we tabling until um, the next meeting because yep. then this might not be resolved at least the no next sense. meeting because I think that gives time to go back and ask the electrician the questions and hopefully ever source them <coughs> well so when you've tabled something it goes to the next meeting. Um, it the the um, body needs to vote to take it off the table at so it'll show up on your next meeting and the body has to vote to take it off the table mm -hmm. And if nobody votes to take it off the table, it stays on the table. then it just, right, yep. it stays on the table for two meetings yep. and then it goes away. Yep. Okay. So, and that, so it would show up under unfinished business correct. town council action item correct. 14. Yes. Which would be our two months. Oh, if it takes that long. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of tabling this motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> Motion carries. This item has been tabled. We'll now move on on the agenda. I would like to make a motion to on the agenda to move item 17, executive session, in front of item 16. <coughs> These gentlemen have been waiting here more than long enough to get them up here in front of us. <laughs> so I make a motion to move an executive okay. session of the town manager uh, and <coughs> Town the attorney. town attorney and first, the gentleman. First move it. First move it. Yeah. First move it. Yeah. Move well, we're gonna move. We're gonna amend the. Yeah. Oh, yeah. to move. We gotta. Yeah. Gotcha. So we've got a motion that was made by Mr. Catula to move item 17 ahead of item 16. Um, do I have a second? Second by Ms. Wakefield. Discussion. Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. The motion carries. At this time, um, we are going into executive session with the town council, the town manager, uh, the town attorney, the and the developers. And Jill St. Clair. And Jill St. Clair. And uh, Jen Hawkins. And Jen Hawkins. Oh, you got to run the presentation? Yep. So, uh, motion. I'll make that motion. Motion was made by Mr. Wood. Second. Second by Ms. Wakefield. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. We are in executive session. Now, do we have?